This is coming from a heart, from hearts that are sincere and true before you. We acknowledge how much we need you, and we acknowledge that we are desperate, unashamedly desperate. You have become our life, you have become the source of wisdom. And we give you all the praise, all the praise, all the praise. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to visit you in a very unique way tonight. Open your mouth and pray. Visit me, O God. Visit me in a mighty way. Visit me in a mighty way. Visit me in a mighty way. Jesus, let your word come strong, let it change our lives forever, and let it make us mighty men and women. Amen. God bless you. Please sit down. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone. Thank you so much for the sacrifice of being here tonight those following us online we welcome you the overflow thank you so much the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus I'll be sharing a few things tonight and then we'll pray I thought we'll make tonight a prayer meeting but then um, I just have to share a few things but then let's see how God will grant us grace then we'll be able to commit some time to pray tonight hallelujah just turn to your neighbor and tell them God bless you Mike said something that was very striking while the worship team were ministering and he said koinonia teaches you that you can get many things but then he said the highest paraphrasing the greatest is God there are many things that are available in the kingdom prosperity is available influence is available all of these great attributes are available but the highest pursuit the highest the apex of your pursuit must be God himself hallelujah when you get to a point where you seek any other thing above God I don't care what it is it has become an idol at that exact point are we together so we must be careful and we must guide our pursuits so that at no time are we found consciously or subconsciously pursuing anything that is above God every other thing becomes relevant only when the position of God is healthy and secured in your life when the position of God in your life is threatened by anything regardless of how legitimate it is then you're already walking in a danger zone you must make sure the position of God please pay attention is secured beyond disturbance secured beyond disturbance that nothing in life has the capacity to disturb his place in your life you only become a winner when that is in place regardless of what you seek regardless of what you want believe me brothers and sisters it is totally mundane if it makes God secondary I don't care what it is if at any point any other thing you seek has the capacity to push God and you are not afraid of it pushing God you are already losing something 
God's position must be secured beyond and above contention. Hallelujah. It says, and this is eternal life, to know you, the one true God. This is eternal life, not to have money. Money is important. This is eternal life, not to have anointing. Anointing is important. Right? It's very important to know him. To know him. To know him. Hear what Paul said. That I may know him. He didn't say that we may know him. That I may know him. That's my cry. That's my passion. That I may know him. When a believer loses fire for the pursuit of God, it is the clearest sign that your life is under attack. You don't need to find out whether you are sick or not. The moment you find out that your passion for God is dying, you don't need any other sign. Your life at that point is under serious attack and calls for emergency. Pray this prayer before we continue tonight. And say, Lord, be seated at the throne of my heart. Let it be a position. If anything has threatened your position there, I, I use my will and I secure your position as Lord. As Lord, not occupant. As Lord, not tenant. As Lord. As Lord. Don't be seated in the throne of my heart as a co-occupant, as a co-tenant with something else. Let your position be secured beyond intimidation. Are you praying? It's a very powerful prayer. Very, very powerful prayer. Lord, dismiss the things that threaten your position in my heart. They are not worthy of my life. If they must threaten you to bless me, then they are from the devil. If they must threaten your place in my life to bless me, then they are of the devil. Any desire in my heart that cannot submit to you, I throw it out. I throw it out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a very powerful prayer. Tonight you will be mightily blessed. Mightily blessed in the name of Jesus. I want you to... We are going to pray in tongues for two, three minutes or so. Hold on. I will direct you before we start. Because I want to teach you tonight on spiritual intelligence. And believe me, it will change your life. We will not finish it. We will just continue it as a series. But I want to open your eyes to a lot of things. We have to grow and trust God for capacity. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way... For the way Hallelujah. One of my goals by the grace of God is to help us become very spiritual. Very spiritual. Because the Bible says to be spiritual or to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The epicenter of your success and progress in life is your capacity spiritually both in terms of who you are becoming and what you know. When you know God, you are really spiritual. When you understand His ways, you are really spiritual. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spiritual intelligence. There are a number of things that I'm going to be talking about. Um, it's a discussion, really. We're going to just be talking about a number of things. Um, but the goal is to open our eyes and to cause us to be spiritual. To discern the happenings around us and to be able to know how to respond to life accordingly. Spiritual growth as we have been taught again and again is measured by two parameters. Parameter number one is how much you are conforming experientially to the image of the Christ. The Bible teaches very clearly how that conformity is an index that shows an individual or a people are growing. So if you want to measure whether or not koinonia as a ministry and individuals, if we are growing as individuals, um, first you look at our degree of conformity. That this gentleman started coming for koinonia, for instance, last week. And we are able to measure from last week to this week what has happened in his life. Has his appetite for God been heightened? You know, we had some very um, emotional times yesterday. I think with Ejimi and Mike, he was over at my place. And then um, we had some really lovely discussions. And we were just reminiscing on how we all started with God uh, as against some of the veering off that people are having today. We discussed how the ministry started and how God has been able to help. And um, we, we said a lot of very interesting things. Um, back then, every night was a project on someone. Praise God. Every night. You were not trusted if you were not filled with the Holy Spirit with a personality that can vouch for you it's not that you just come from nowhere and just say um no 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 that time somebody had to get you born again filled with the holy spirit and there was a community of believers that guided your growth so the possibilities of varying off was very fine very the there was an environment of people and then I think one of the things that helped us to grow, you may want to learn this, is that we had a covenant of accountability. I think it's one of the things most people do not have. A personal covenant of accountability. What that means is that you covenant with your life that you are not going to deafen your ears. There has to be someone who is able to challenge you. You don't come back home by 11.30 with no explanation and say it doesn't matter. No, it does. It matters. Covenant of accountability. Are we together now? We look at your life one week. You have not prayed to the hearing of anybody. You can't say you are meditating for one week. Your prayer is not to the hearing of anybody. Somebody has to ask you, are you okay? Are you sick? Do you need help? So it was very easy. Even those who didn't want to be serious with God, the plane was moving so fast. There was no way when people got born again within one week just one week their lives would change now of course we cannot be that meticulous uh, because we are so many now but i'm saying it is it is important for you to know how god started with us the reason why many people don't grow spiritually is because they don't follow the formula for growth they do it haphazardly and carelessly praise god so that's the first index, your conformity, your conformity, conformity to Christ, conformity. Jesus is the reference of what the believer should look like. So when you find out that your growth process is making you look like any other thing outside of Christ, you need to review what you are looking at and what you are listening to. The second parameter for growth is access to light light and understanding your comprehension your understanding understanding is everything in the kingdom understanding is everything in the kingdom 
understanding is what defines the limits of your life and destiny please pay attention understanding is the reason why you may enjoy a quality of life that is superior or otherwise understanding is very very important when when satan comes into a person's life he tries to destroy your understanding destroy your understanding that's why you see that we we emphasize understanding hallelujah we live in a world where many people are largely ignorant of the systems of god many people are ignorant of the personalities that are on earth both spiritual and physical many people are in ignorance as to the implications of living and the implications of interacting with our realm some years ago maybe four years or so five years four five years i preached a message called spiritual perception and i thought how that your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit must and should be activated and deployed to help sustain your spiritual growth you must be able to sense the impulses of the spirit to know both the speakings of god and the movement of god and so god has created provisions within us to help us tap into his speakings and tap into his responses the the summation of all those things is what the bible calls discernment the capacity to walk in the impulses of the spirit are we together now praise god but most people largely do not have that understanding and um, it has really destroyed our lives the first thing i want to discuss tonight is the spirituality of life the first mystery that we want to look at everybody write this down life is spiritual everybody write it down and then we'll say it life is spiritual say it after me life is spiritual therefore living must be spiritual see if life is spiritual then it no no no, no I'm, I'm talking now if life is spiritual then it's foolish to not factor in the realm of the spirit as you attempt to live many of us believe life is intellectual so we think that the moment you are educated as, as as far as we know education to be the enlightenment secular enlightenment we believe we are ready for living other people think life is just biological so the older you grow you think your growth is qualifying you for living are we together other people think life is sociological so the more you know people you believe you have what it takes to live but i'm telling you this life is spiritual find out how many people's destinies have gone in shambles because of their not having this spiritual intelligence that life is spiritual everything brothers and sisters about life is spiritual you go back to the book of the beginnings genesis and everything is spiritual everything spiritual in the beginning the bible says god created now that is that is i tell you we can dwell weeks just talking about genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning what beginning god created the heavens and the earth so where was he because he created the heavens he created the earth meaning he was not in any of those places where was he the bible calls him dwelling in a place of unapproachable light governs the affairs of men from that standpoint god created not invented the earth was not invented the heavens were not invented they were created created with the intelligence of a superior being so it's foolish to walk upon the earth wondering if there is a synergy to the happenings of things life is spiritual the earth upon which you walk is spiritual you as an entity is spiritual 
unfortunately only witches and wizards know this are we together now only the people who destroy the destinies of men in villages know this the average believer is generally aware of the spirituality of life but has not come into an understanding that one of the keys to spiritual intelligence is to come to terms with the fact that life and everything about it is spiritual life and what everything about it no matter how trivial no matter how scientific spiritual hallelujah spiritual when you understand the spirituality of life then all of a sudden you will start seeing a line connecting dots as to the happenings of people's lives listen a man does not just get up and become poor like that a family does not just get up and not make progress just like that a man does not just beat his wife just like that a wife does not just beat her husband just like that the the source of that strength requires investigation are we together now a small child does not become so audacious that he looks at his father and says i can kill you no 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 no. the, the source of that audacity has to be investigated life is spiritual a church does not just grow members don't just carry their bibles from different points and start saying let's go to the same place without knowing themselves there's no wire connecting them you don't just open a shop and everybody from everywhere decides that they want to come to you no sir no sir life is spiritual you see men moving all around and you do not know what moves them spirituality of life someone decides to help you but you show up and something about your life you are not aware of makes the person to drive you away someone promises to marry you even goes to see your parents and all of a sudden introduction has been done he just comes up and says i had a strange dream i can't understand that's not the first time of having a dream but because of that dream you lose out on an opportunity brothers and sisters if you understand that life is spiritual you already without even understanding the nitty gritties you are already ahead of many people in life i will never treat my life from a scientific perspective no i will never treat ministry from a scientific perspective in the realm of the spirit one plus one is not two you have to define what one is you have to define what two is you have to define what other factors are in the equation we run our lives scientifically we run our lives intellectually sociologically and we become victims the book of job is full of mysteries that open up the reality of the spirituality of life when you look at the book of psalms david opened us to the spirituality of life when you read psalm 91 he starts by saying he that dwells in the secret place question where is that location today because david said a man can dwell there have you found it where is it like an address david is giving us an address where people can find safety and he never said a police station he that dwells somewhere there is a place a man can stand that you become immune he that dwells in the secret place of the most high then the second shocking thing is shall abide not under the light under the shadow what is that abide under a shadow that means your shadow has a spiritual implication this thing you look at li listen 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 i'm not talking of all this moving around you and let you fall down that's i'm talking of something deeper you know physics just tells us when light is casted on an object it creates a shadow that's as far as you know but the bible says men can dwell under a man's shadow 
Do you love Jesus? We love the Bible, right? So, I mean, you are not, the way you are looking at me is as if I'm teaching heresy. It's, it's right in the Bible. Shall abide under. He gives the shadow of God a three dimensional explanation. You can come under it. Then he says, I will say of the Lord, He is this and that and that and that. Please give it to us, Psalm 91. Let's look at it. Yes, that's the song. Your influence is all over me. Verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, He is my what? Refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will not trust. So let's see why verse 1 and 2 is there. Verse 3. It says, Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Look at all these descriptions. They are descriptions of strange things. You don't see them with your optical eyes, but their effects are as physical as anything. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with what? Stop. Hold on. Describe a man for me with a three-dimensional shadow and has feathers somewhere in his body. Which part of him has feathers? Because he was not just speaking a parable. He says, he shall cover thee with his feathers. <laughs> then and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield that means in the realm of the spirit truth is not an information truth is a physical reality it's a shield you can hold it like i'm holding a tie truth is is, is an object relatable are you getting something now you will be so blessed if you pay attention to what i'm telling you five this is not even this i just want us to look at it just play around it it says because of all these provisions this is the only condition where thou shalt not be afraid because there is something called terror by night everybody say terror by night no matter how peaceful an environment is the bible says once it is night there is a mystery of darkness and terror listen the bible says we wrestle not against against flesh and blood but against principalities powers listen then it says rulers of darkness they don't they cannot rule in light the moment he's not talking of spiritual darkness the moment there is physical darkness is a sign they are authorized to come out like animals that can only come out in the night so the bible calls it terror by night yet it's night time people like that's why people die in the night they that drink drink in the night where you see a man drinking by seven in the morning he's, he's a stupid man already something is wrong with his life but that's a, an acute complication no many things happen to people in the night the destinies of men are exchanged by night there are men that sit down and discuss they play the destinies of men like a chess terror by night not just um, terrorism as we know are you aware that there is such provision spiritual intelligence number one life spiritual mm. thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day have you ever seen them have you ever seen an arrow living somewhere but he said there are arrows that fly by day only God knows how many people it hits today because it flies every day. You get up and leave your house and something happens. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Life is spiritual. Job chapter 1, a meeting was being held in the heavenlies. Satan now comes and a conversation is engaged. Have you considered my servant Job? While they are discussing that Job is on earth, minding his business. And all of a sudden, things begin to nose dive in Job's life. It's amazing how many people try to ignore the spirituality of life and expect to rise in life. It's impossible. It's impossible. And more so, this is Africa. You know, we just pretend as I'm not talking of witchcraft. The portals of Africa are open to spirituality. It doesn't matter through which force. I'm just saying the portals of Africa as a continent is richly open. 
Have you not heard of men walking back home and a hand slapped them? Have, have you heard of those kind of things? A real three-dimensional hand, but they didn't see it. You don't have to see it to feel it. Are we together? And the person goes back and all of a sudden, one of us showed me a picture of his dad yesterday. Half of the leg had been eaten. You can literally see the bones like that, half of it. Do you know what happened? He was sleeping. A mystery happened. He woke up and all of a sudden, that leg physically. There are many things you call sicknesses. You don't even know where it came from. I'm sick. You go to the hospital. They tell you there is nothing wrong with you. They check everything. You know the doctor even says, stop coming here. You are, you are wasting our time. But you know you are not feeling fine. Are we together? Mysteries that cannot be explained. Life is spiritual. I learned this very early in life. The spirituality of life. The spirituality of ministry. The spirituality of living. When you know this, your pursuit for God does not become... You know, every time you see somebody unusually zealous, they just say, Kai, this guy, I'm sure you are going to be a pastor. Or this lady, I'm sure God is already grooming you. He has isolated you and is grooming you to be a pastor's wife. No. The key to survival is to become spiritually minded. Please hear what I'm saying. Some of our parents right now ignore this and they are paying for it dearly. There are mysteries in people's families they do not, ex they do not understand. Life is everything spiritual. When Jesus came, his birth was spiritual. Everything about it. Now look at this for God's sake. A woman is minding her business, probably imagining what dress will I wear for my wedding. All of a sudden, a stranger just appears. Hail Mary! He didn't even say, what is your name, ma? Hail Mary! In other words, we have been watching you. Your name is Mary. We know. You don't have to tell anyone your name in the realm of the Spirit. No, sir. No, sir. If God ever asks you what is your name, it's for a reason. I mean, it doesn't make sense for him to ask you what is your name. He wants to change it. Then that's when he will ask you. Yeah, in scripture, Saul, Paul, and all of that. But that they are asking you because they want you to supply an information. No, no, no. Are we together? Do you know? Let me teach you something. You can never see a spirit being and be the same. Whether a demon, whether an angel. You may never know what happens to you. Brothers and sisters, listen. If this is a shrine and you just run by mistake and say, Oh, the wrong place. As you never will live the same. No, it's impossible. 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 You thought you ran too fast to be seen. The realm of the spirit is not like that. Please understand what I'm saying. If you know this, that you are coming for koinonia, you may be sitting outside, you will never feel bad again. Because you realize that, wow, this thing is that. It's just because we are, because of the physical comfort of maybe being inside and all of that. But it makes no difference. That's why you can be saying God is touching somebody and someone in the second overflow is flying there. You that you are close, you are now looking at ah, God, you mean you jumped me? Listen, the Holy Spirit does not move with time and distance. Mm -mm. These two factors don't exist. No, 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 no. Like you say, I have to touch you before touching you. That's physics. In the realm of the spirit, you don't do that. Are we together? Are you understanding this? So you can never see a spirit being. Anybody that tells you he has been having encounters with spirits, I think you should respect that person, whether in a negative way or positive way. That I've had some appreciable and except if, if the person is lying, if the person is telling the truth, no, you are meeting a dangerous person for good or for bad. Most of the world leaders interact with spirits. Please look at me, let me preach to you. Forget the fact that you see everybody wearing suits and going for forums. They are being advised, counseled, rebuked, directed by strange spirits. There are documentaries upon documentaries on my system. 
that proves to you that no man let me teach you something brothers and sisters you want to be famous a day will come a spirit must show up in your life to say all right now that you have gotten to this level we have to negotiate for it to go further i give you a guarantee 100 percent if jesus does not appear to you an angel sent from god does not appear to you a demon who are somebody is seen it's like a realm you keep rising nobody disturbs you but you get to a point they say okay everybody that rises from here right now the realm of the spirit cannot be strange to such a person that's why you enter a business meeting somebody looks at you you look at him two of you know yourselves everybody knows what he has touched or otherwise there is a level you cannot be neutral believe what i'm telling you when you see people doing some things they are doing they have seen something when a woman looks at you and says i will kill you mark my words you better take it seriously either pray or stand on the confidence of what you now know but to say ah, this is what you just you would really die because you see let me tell you there are too many laws that can remove your spirit from your body many many laws many laws N not just death there are many spiritual laws that can separate a man's body from his spirit any of them can be manipulated to kill you You see that sickness and accident are physical expressions of the commonest laws that are used to separate people's bodies from their spirits. Like you skin a cow. Have you gone to the abattoir? You see them, they have a skill. They skin a cow. There is a mystery that can remove your spirit from your body. And many people move carelessly. And then it happens. It may happen to a car. It may happen to different things. But it is still a manifestation of this. You cannot sit on certain positions being neutral. It's impossible. I remember one of our friends years ago. He got a job. And I remember him saying they were paying them. Them that were struggling. They were paying them 50,000. And they were paying the prophets 1.2. Now, they don't call it salary, they call it honorarium, but it's still a release of something from the giver to the person who needs it. They pay you 50000 for laborious study of five, six years under the most stringent conditions possible. And somebody just throws and comes in and they give the person 1.2. You know why? Because that person has an advantage. He can do something. Hi! Life is spiritual life is spiritual life is spiritual i don't have to see you to talk to you life is spiritual life is spiritual people's lives are being manipulated without their will life is spiritual many of us were born in pure christian families we never had any touch with idolatry so you don't understand the spirituality of life but for a few people who veered off here and there did one or two things life is spiritual grandparents just come out and sit on the ground and after a few minutes they stand up they say it's all right it will be well with you go and you're saying what did they see life is spiritual in the bible before they fought wars they will go and ask the kings and prophets please will we win and then they will say there's trouble though. and then they will say how can we change it now this is the part of spirituality that shocks me the ability to change things change things by the spirit like a cleaner i look and i find out that this is supposed to happen then you clean it as if there's nothing there Habba. oh you were supposed to die tomorrow then somebody just cleans it what advantage do you have do you understand that your life is spiritual when you sit down in that class, do you know that it's not just one person sitting down? Life is spiritual. Now, the, it's not to just make us irresponsible and just see demons in everything. When I talk of the spirituality of life, I'm not just talking about demons. I'm talking about the presence of spirits to guarantee anything happening. You, the concept of being an atheist is another class of deception. 
Life is very spiritual. You see a lot of people come to dig a well. After they dig a well, the water comes out. They will tell you, go and look for chicken. Has that happened to you? Go and look for chicken. They slaughter the chicken and make incantations in the well and the water will never stop coming. Think about that. Do you know the water on earth is older than everybody on earth now? I hope you know that. The water on earth is older than everybody on earth. You are not drinking a person. You are not drinking a substance. You are drinking history. This was only bottled. Only God knows who laid hands on this water. Could it be part of Noah's flood? Could it be? You just know you are just swallowing it and then your body just reacts. You take something and all of a sudden your body reacts. I'm comfortable. Koinonia, listen, listen, listen. Let me teach you these things. If you do not understand it, don't be great. Just get a one room apartment, get married, have two or three children, be a kingdom financier, and wait for the day you'll be with the Lord. But that you want to rise in this world we live in. No. We're traveling to Benin Republic. I think I told when we got somewhere, a man, one Lenge guy. Very Lenge guy, just looking, like all these smokers. He looked at me and he called my name, Joshua. You've seen them now. You see them in markets. They look at you and in five minutes they start giving word of knowledge. You've not seen those kind of people. They look at you and say, Madam, uh -uh, why, is, uh, why is, is, is Joshua stubborn like this now? He said, don't disturb me, but because they mentioned Joshua. I said, who? <laughs> say again. Life is spiritual. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. It is written. I just appeared, but something has been written. A script. A script about your life. Written. When you understand the spirituality of life, then you also know that you have an advantage by the spirit to manipulate things to be consistent with the word of God in your life. This is the rebel. This is where I'm taking you to. When I understand that life is spiritual, I don't mourn at physical results because I know that there is a loop through the spirit where things can be corrected. Are you seeing that now? At that point, I stop worrying. Shabbatala kosaya, because I know there is an advantage. The advantage is my access. My access to spirituality. I can be assisted by a spirit being. In this case, the Holy Spirit. Listen. One of my best scriptures in the Bible is, Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. A beast of a man just came and said, If you don't tell me my dream and the solution, I will kill you. And he said, King, don't be hasty. Don't worry. Let's just go and sleep. While other people were sleeping, he knew... That something happens to men at night. The night is also a time for revelation. Listen, you try praying in the night and try praying in the day. If you pray seriously, come and tell me the difference. Come and tell me the difference. This is this this one. This one is like my office. I can tell you everything you want to know about it. The night time, I have sorted out the mysteries of the night in a very strange way. The Magi came out and they saw a star and they started smiling. They said a king is born. Not a child. A king is born. And they started going. When they met Herod, they said, um, we came from the east. Based on our study, we have books here prophesying and a physical star because in genesis chapter one he said he made the stars to signify times and seasons times seasons hallelujah so they looked at it and then it led them to the place and when they got there they saw a baby but because they knew that it was not a baby they started worshiping him if I if you are worshiping a Jimmy's child, won't somebody know that they'll say they want to kill your child, a Jimmy? But now two, three, or well, the Bible doesn't say three men, 
but we know magi came from the east and they are worshipping someone because they are seeing more than that and all of a sudden an angel appears and says run away with this child they want to kill him run quickly do you know why because jesus could die hmm. did you hear what i said the angel will not waste his time and say run away with that child if he could not die he could die if he if they disobeyed that angel they would have killed him the only thing is the body will not decay but he would die yeah he would die are we together when jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights satan was waiting very strange immediately he finished he just showed up now watch this if the devil is near you won't you drive him but hear him he's walking with jesus satan walking with jesus please come you are not the devil in jesus name say amen but watch this i'm minding my business and somebody appears and i look and say satan you again think about that this is what happened in your bible and he said ah jesus you are hungry turn this stone into bread and then he said it is written and he didn't disappear he didn't go he continued with another temptation he said jesus follow me let me show you something and jesus followed him your bible they went up the mountain said look at all the glories of the earth hold on where is that mountain where a man can stand and see the glories of the world at once is it mount everest it's a mystery these guys just came out of the physical realm into the realm of the spirit and said stand i show you all the kings i have empowered this is it like a window like you just step out into a door and show jesus all the glories he said if you bow to me i will give you if you bow to me that is the mystery of the wealth of sinners if you bow to me i will give you satan does not need money he needs your bowing if you bow to me i will give you so when you say you want to be blessed and not bow ah uh ah -uh, says no you can't eat your cake and have it your allegiance and then i give you every other thing and you say no i will have it are you seeing so you just get up and say why are christians not getting jobs now you understand he took him and showed him the system bow to me so you want a job but you don't want to bow to him you must find out what provision has been made because jesus conquered him then he now took him up a cliff and he said jump down he said he shall put his angels charge over you look at satan quoting scriptures the guy you call satan by the way let's not uh, it's not that we're talking about satan but do you really know who he is look up please are you getting blessed am i boring you tonight who exactly is satan a guy with a horn as nigerian film has depicted no that's just to help you understand who exactly is satan because according to scripture we see that satan is a person he can be at a satan is not omniscient not all knowing the ignorance of satan is clear from genesis to revelation there are many things he did not know are we together number two satan is not omnipresent many times he's at a spot he can be everywhere he's focusing on the issues that are most important question three is satan down up or where where does he live now today because when we say down down satan up up jesus none of them is living up or down that's not the address of any of them it's not the address of any of them you go up i guarantee you are not going to see anything there you see that because i hope you know that this our realm is suspended in space space that even scientists don't know there is no reference to measure where we are at now and it was concealed by the wisdom of god you can't you can't tell whether we're in the middle what where exactly are we you call this solid you are standing here now but you are floating and moving around think about it yet the bible says it has foundations 
the earth your earth jesus himself or well god speaking now told job that the earth has foundations who is satan why does he make you afraid please look at me let, let somebody be delivered now who is that guy that threatens the whole world where is he now if you call him will he come are we together now do you know there was a time in the civilization of god's kingdom where satan was not there he was not even created i hope you know satan has a creation date he was not born so he was created are we together now let me shock you number two i hope you know satan is not the most dangerous of spirits evil spirits now no of course the bible never teaches that that satan is the most dangerous of the spirits no there are spirits currently now that were bound in everlasting chains now as i speak they could not be released because even the elect if they are released they may not stand them now as i speak there are spirits bound but satan is going to and fro he's not part of them I want you to understand this you see you disarm darkness when you have light you disarm darkness when you have light all through scripture we see that demons can be told what to do and they can be told where to go and under certain conditions they must obey are we together now so how does satan carry out the advancement of all of these things how does he do that you see somebody who minds his business and you begin to pray for him he's manifesting the power of god is upon him and he's vomiting something physical vomiting razor vomiting this and that now that's an ugly scene frankly speaking but i mean it's a shock I've counseled so many people. I remember one gentleman who said they, their father took all of them for protection. After making incisions on them, God is my witness. They gave all of them two-two razor blade, physical sharp razor blade. The man said, "Just close your eyes and eat it." The guy said, "Are you joking? This is razor." And they said they threw it in their mouth and they were shocked. They didn't wound them. They didn't do anything. It disappeared. Nobody swallowed their own. Now, when a razor disappears in your mouth, you have to find out where it went to. <laughs> Say after me, life is, spiritual. life is spiritual. There are people who end their salaries. Their physical money disappears. I'm not saying sickness took it. You kept 20 naira, you come and find 15 naira. Yet you are alone in the room. There are individuals that have strange visitations by men, women. Strange beings in the night. A spirit comes and then comes to sleep with you. Or do certain things and you get up with all kinds of things you have a dream that there was an incision you wake up physically with a mark with blood was that was that just a, was that a story a spirit having an affair with you in a dream because spirits are neither male nor female you understand so there is no reason why you should be having that let me explain to you the mysteries behind people's lives that they don't know pay attention to what i'm saying we live in a world that you must have spiritual intelligence there are four things i'm talking about maybe i'll just take this one today because i can dwell here and explain to you the mystery behind the happenings of people just like that life is spiritual all of a sudden in three weeks promise men start coming to your life to favor you where were they what happened before that they didn't come somebody spoke to you he didn't give you money he just spoke to you you didn't see anything leaving him it's not even that his saliva touched you he just said something to you and you left believing you carried something and you come out and people start treating you in a certain way say after me life is spiritual you had the testimony of that dear lady about the favor 
how many of you have been crying and your helpers are next door but they cannot speak to you but all of a sudden something happens and you begin to see people arise for you life is spiritual every one of you seated here as many as you are look at people standing outside and i say this with all humility human beings are not idiots nobody comes to stand outside in the cold and just watching because he's trying to what is so special about the man of god everyone say life is spiritual it's not just poster it's not just balloons there are mysteries do you know sometimes i watch people when i come for corner and i see people sit down i know that the spirit realm brought them even them they are surprised what am i doing here yet you are still coming spiritual are we together when a lady gets married and all of a sudden her womb closes watch this what is satan looking for why is her womb closing she goes to the hospital the doctor say you are fine we've checked you you are okay or god we checked you you are okay but then the child does not come at all two years three years five years the child does not come and then all of a sudden they begin to have problems husband and wife and then everything scatters are we together and then watch this that same woman will live in defiance and go and have an affair with another man and get pregnant instantly instanta that means it was never about anything wrong with her there are people who have seen people have prayed for people with hiv it's not that they lived a careless life no no i remember a testimony i don't know if it was here that was shared someone went to bed in the night all of a sudden a stranger appeared held syringe and told the person this thing inside it is hiv injected the person he woke up physically with hiv is there any amount of antiretroviral drug that will heal that person if the sickness came from the realm of the spirit medicine can only manage it the real cure the real cure will come from the realm of the spirit Are we together? Families in disarray because they do not understand that life is spiritual. There are people who will be driving, driving, going to their place of work at top speed. The car will just lock, lock in one position. I've spoken with many people who had accidents. You ask them what happened, they tell you, I tried to turn the steering. I'm not a careless driver. I did my best. I was watching myself dying. You know, I've seen the spirit of death. I know it. It knows me. I've seen the spirit of death. So I know what I'm telling you. It comes to hospitals in the night. Patients in wards. And all of a sudden, hovers round. And all of a sudden, people just leave. And in the morning, you come and find out so-so person is dead. There are times it will come over territories. Like a city, like Zaria, like this. It will just come. It's invoked by powers. They do incantations and invoke it. It can loom around a territory for three weeks. And there are ghastly motor accidents, headache, killing men. A pastor just standing on stage preaching and he will collapse and die. And then after a while, when the invocation has fulfilled its reason for coming it quietly leaves you see it happen break forth thou fountains of the deep and weep carnage you are mighty on your own you reign you ancient Zion's king Kadosh Abraham Abraham is returning from war and all of a sudden a strange man appears the Bible says no father no mother what kind of a man is that Melchizedek just shows up and says Abraham you don't know me but I am a king a king of where I've never heard about you you are a king listen listen 
the earth is not the only place that has kings Melchizedek said I am a king of where? Salem an ancient city of peace then he looks at Abraham and said I'm on assignment Abraham gives him a tithe of all and he says Abraham I want to activate something in your life blessed be Abraham possessor you, of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth listen you never see Melchizedek in the Bible again the next time Melchizedek shows up is in Jesus hold on the Bible now calls him a priest after the order of Melchizedek read your Bible and see the strangers that met with men that we never saw again never saw again never saw again There are men who started churches. When the church started growing, one time all of a sudden, spirits just appeared to them. I'm the power that controls this territory. We can negotiate all this. Bishop Oedeko shared and said how that the, the Kaduna church was not growing. Still anointed, still with power. The Kaduna church was not growing. And all of a sudden, he said one time they were fasting and praying. Say life is spiritual and all of a sudden he came out and the holy ghost asked him to come out he said look and he looked and he saw a dark veil dark veil covering the people he said this is the veil that misinterprets what i am doing misinterprets it and he commanded it and it left he, he just left like that and all of a sudden members started coming what is the relationship between members and this have you not heard of people who want name kings and they bury their children correct they bury people alive and you just get up and come to fight them you die for nothing i was in mina last week and one of us the media person met me and then you know talking about the security situation around and he said something he said a particular village when there was war about to happen in a particular village that the people there said no problem that the people just carried their charms and came and lined it in front of the village mysterious substances started killing the armies one of them something ate his hand you don't know what it is those people they have it when the going gets tough they bring it out are you aware that life is spiritual are you aware that your life is spiritual when you know this it should not make you afraid it should give you the key to changing anything when you know that life is spiritual you will value prayer because you will know that when you pray among many other things you are changing things you are shifting things in the realm of the spirit my life today is a product of this singular revelation life is spiritual you never see me sit down and i'm just discussing physical things with people i may keep quiet and nod but i am reading between the lines and when i get it i say oh that's it we know what the problem is listen koinonia let me tell you the relevance of this understanding you never will try to fight physical people again if your roommate is fighting you all the time know that life is spiritual fighting your roommate is when you finish praying you find out that they are behaving haywire don't you know that there is a spirit that was watching while you are praying and now you are coming all of a sudden they will pour water on your bed because anger is a gateway in the realm of the spirit so the devil will try to rob you from joy joy with joy shall you draw that's why you finish praying and your father insults you that's why as you are living from koinonia you receive hostilities from people when you know that life is spiritual you will stop being angry and you will stop wasting your time let me tell you how many of us have aborted prophecy you don't know that life is spiritual the moment a miracle is about to come that's when you hear stories that five people said about you satan is moving through men moving through men the moment there is a breakthrough did you hear this about pastor jakes and then you are bitter and then you are angry and the demons say praise god this is exactly what we are looking for and all of a sudden the prophecy is aborted like a woman pregnant 
But there are those who understand this. And the moment they are looking at you, you say, no, no, I know it's not you. You are just a victim of the realm of the spirit. So I ignore them and I keep dancing my way to joy. Listen, when Jesus was going to enter a city, do you know how he said we should enter? He sat down on a horse and said, people, praise and sing. If Jesus entered that city silently, something dangerous would have happened. He listened. Do you know joy and laughter are weapons in the spirit? Look at me. Look at me. Let me share something with you. Sam, if you are talking to all of us now and we start laughing and scorning you, what happens to you? Talk to me. Do you know if I am angry at promise, my joy is to see him angry. When he's angry, then what I have done to make him angry is working. But when you see somebody that you are praying that something bad happens to him, always happy and joyful, it will disarm you. The Bible says, why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Listen, the kings of the earth, they set themselves, right, against God as his anointed. Then it says, he that sits on the throne, hold on, it didn't say he will fight first. The first thing that happens. <laughs> Laughter is an expression of joy. Hold on, hold on. That's why when people are under the anointing, sometimes you see them laughing hysterically. Now, you are not spiritual, so you just think, which kind of men of God are these? That's serious breakthrough happening to them in the realm of the spirit. There are people under the anointing, you see them start dancing. I'm not talking of, they can't even control themselves. Dancing, and you may not understand. When they were going to take the ark back, there was a formula. It was always with singing and dancing. I was, I was sharing with you, Jimmy. I will just share it to help you. I, I think it was um, um, yesterday we were talking. I got up in the morning about to pray. And the Lord said, no, you are not going to pray. You are going to dance before me. Two hours stretch, non-stop. That's all I did. All I did. I was so tired. I, I said, wait, wait, which style now am I going to? I mean, what is all this? But I knew I'm smart enough to know life is spiritual. Listen, listen. That two hours may be equivalent to 15 years breakthrough. Two hours. You reign, you ancient science king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient science king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. spiritual Joshua chapter 1 2 3 they surveyed Jericho and all of a sudden he says walk around don't talk just walk around what is the stupidity of walking around life is spiritual you call it madness a man is walking around once and then he says on the seventh day hold on listen the Bible says the fence of Jericho five chariots could stand on it so even if you turn it it will still become another fence are we together there are people who are too big for breakthrough they are too they are they are they are, they are too carnal and scientific for the stupidity that spirituality requires life is spiritual they moved around the seventh time the moment they got there he said now Tejila, don't fight shout shout and the bible says when they shouted listen, listen hold on hold on hear me sometimes sometimes you hear people say give god a shout or sometimes you see about to minister and i tell you you are going to shout the name jesus you may think they are just formulas stupidly you see this is they, once your mind if you allow people who are depraved and don't know god they will rubbish your breakthrough they will say what are you doing what what are you saying same thing with praying in tongues you are praying in tongues and someone sees you and say you too you are in this thing you are doing this thing too ah. you too you are you are joining them at your age you went to school listen listen 
I tell you, I have mastered how to destroy Jericho in my life. I know the principles. Life is spiritual. When I found this key, I stopped wasting my time. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you how to come out of any trouble in your life. Should I tell you? Listen, after you finish praying, listen, I want you to laugh and dance. Dance is a strange mystery of deliverance. Strange mystery. Believe what I'm telling you. Dance is a strange mystery of deliverance. Dr. Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, you claim we taught you faith, but how come you are able to pack over 50,000 people for services? And Oyedeko said, I dance every one of those people to church. See, listen, there is a time to pray, but there is a time to engage other things. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible calls it the sacrifice of praise. It didn't say the music of praise. It's a sacrifice. It will cost you, but it will tear your heavens open. Listen, you have not seen breakthrough till you know how to rejoice before God. There's nothing I know that paralyzes Satan like an expression of praise and joy. It's one of the seven mysteries God revealed to me. Seven mysteries. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me show you how men have commanded victory in their lives. When you don't know the key and you don't know that life is spiritual, you will waste your time. Cheap victories, you will never get it. I remember a woman who shared a testimony. Um, she was barren and then she started bleeding. She, she took him and then she started bleeding. And she went to a man of God who happened to be a doctor. True story. And the man said, Ah, Madam, Thor, right now, honestly... This, this thing, of course, you know what that means. It's, it's over. Just trust God for grace. And the woman said, no. I know what my Bible says. The man said, well, you know I'm a pastor, but I'm also a medical practitioner. When he finished everything, the woman said she did. Do you know what they say? Dancing vigil. Not, not you put vigil and put songs. And you are, she said she danced her way and that child returned from wherever he was. Listen. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, honestly, you can go home. Cornonia has finished for you this night. So that you don't waste your time. You are too big to engage these mysteries. Some things will never happen in your life. Never happen. Hallelujah. There are mysteries. When the devil wants to get your life, he will use men. Listen. Every time you start seeing strange attacks, it's a sign that something is about to drop. Be careful. Be sensitive. Bitterness will start coming. Are we together now? Betrayal will come. All kinds of things. There are demon spirits desperate trying to use men to look for access to sabotage. And that's why you joy, 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 rejoicing, dancing. All these things distract you till the miracle comes. Find a man who has refused to get angry. I'll show you a winner. I'll show you a winner. A winner. Some of you, all this, I'm like that. You will never rise beyond certain levels. In our family, we are like that. If I'm angry, should I not say it? Apostle, I'm a human being. You will sit there as a human being and die like men. men. Mysteries. This life is spiritual. You are looking for rent. And the rent has refused to come. Do you know there are times in your life, there is nothing about you that can bring that miracle. You are not expecting money from anybody. There is no hope of anything coming. Those are the times you engage this. You don't go around just saying, Sir, the other day I spoke to you, I'm still here. Or is it that you are not seeing me? No. Let God talk to them. You talk to God. You engage the mysteries. And while you are dancing like a mad person, do you know there are people between now and Friday you will see the strange testimonies that will come in your life if you understand that life is spiritual. This is the foolishness some of us have adopted oh, we have been stupid enough to do it and God has proven himself in a very dangerous way. When we were going for crusade remember when our car stopped let me give you a real testimony the car refused to move they kicked it. It did not move. Remember, we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. 
They kicked it. All of a sudden, we were tired. Everybody was discouraged. Steve Strings just took the guitar and started playing. That was how we started singing. They are witnesses. We kicked that car. It started till we got to the crusade ground. When you understand that life is spiritual, you will know that it's not about your roommate. This, this is the only way to love people. So there's somebody now that you are bitter against, but you are turning your attention to the wrong person and you are giving access to spirits. The devil expects you to see promise. Promise, come, pass this way. And you just pass like that, pulling your mouth. And the devil says, this is exactly what I, I mean. I like this kind of people. They are like robots. Anything we want, they do. But the moment you are passing and he's pulling his face, and how are you? Ah, that's it. You disarm. It's a little act. But you disarm principalities and powers. Because life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Your breakthrough is spiritual. Your husband is spiritual your wife spiritual your baby everything your exams spiritual listen 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 i'm not saying you should not read listen but i'm um, listen let me tell you the truth hear me hear me listen 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 let me tell you something no matter who you are a day will come you will sit down and look at that paper and you will know only God can help me. There is a key. Let me tell you what students do after exams. And let me, that's why many people fail. They come out and then they go to somebody. There's usually somebody saying, what did you write here? Don't, don't do that thing when you come out, walk away. Don't, I put five. You say you put eleven. They say, how did it become eleven? You didn't even put six, you have failed. The answer is five now let me tell you what that i'm not saying you should criticize people are you getting my point when that happens to your spirit all of a sudden you go back and say my god this is it it's over for me my whole life has finished you are helping the demons prophesy to yourself you are helping to speak whereas somebody else will know that honestly it's not that i'm saying you should be lazy but brothers and sisters of what use is the spirit if there's no advantage the spirit there is an advantage we are not idiots believe me you dance an angel to your faculty you dance an angel to your department you dance an angel to open your file come on now dance your way to the admission list Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please believe what I'm saying. This is only one over four. I came tonight to open your eyes. Stop interpreting the happenings in your life. They, they threw you out of the job. Don't sit there and say, Kai, but these people, even my uncle, my uncle, you, you saw me. It's not about your uncle. There's something you can do about it. Stop calling home to listen to bad news. After you listen, close it and say, Lord, I still see what you are doing. I still see what you are doing. Are we together? You hear a word and they say, by the grace of God, your husband is coming. All of a sudden, things begin to happen around you. Somebody just comes and says, you said, why are you putting this marriage sin on your head? And all of a sudden, you feel ashamed, you feel embarrassed. When a prophecy is coming, you can't even lift your hands to receive it because you are saying they are seeing me. They think I'm desperate for marriage. They rob you of your joy. They rob you of your peace. You never get your miracle. Once you sit down, then the devil uses anger. You now sit down, you are talking about other people's relationship and marriage. Tearing people down and sowing a seed that will have a boomerang effect on you. Because life is spiritual. Hear what Proverbs says. It says, be careful as you speak for the birds will carry your words. Have you seen those birds before? The birds will carry your words. My life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. I cannot stop anybody from carrying charm. But I can stop it from touching me. I know what to do. I know what to do. I can't stop the spirit of death from standing on the road, oh Kai. But there is something, there is something that even if it's the devil that drives, he will drive me safely. These are not, these are not empty talks. 
this is what dominion is all about i'm training you i'm giving you spiritual intelligence from now when you walk out of this place for some of you right now there is a text message a heavy insult waiting for you to read now hold on you now know that you don't just turn and call people devils but you just enter and your roommate who right now as you are here they are talking about you and the lord tells you should i tell you how to win buy five for life go and drop it and say people this is for you and you are saying uh -uh, god to be that much of an idiot no somebody that did this is this lady that stopped me from marrying she said something bad to one good military man who would have married me and god says buy malt a carton of malt and go and greet her or god will say wash their plates I know they dirtied your bed. She just changed it, sing praises and wash your plates. Listen, when you disarm powers, you will see God rise in a fearful way. Are we together? Bitterness, anger, envy are more wicked than than anything you can think about. They destroy you. They are like a cancer that sabotages you. many of our parents you know why they may never prosper they are angry at everybody there are people now if they see me coming i see people frown all oh, is he the guy that's him how are they getting money look at this 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 young boys and so the angel the grace for the blessing is authorized to live your life because anything you don't honor cannot be your inheritance are we together now what are they be careful oh all these young guys standing how can people be standing outside are you worshiping a man are you foolish don't castigate anybody but just know that those are joy robbers the moment they start speaking know that your blessing has left heaven and it's about to come and land in your life are we together life is spiritual let me just narrow it down so that we can pray the mystery of praise in a dance in a dance you hear me talking about this dancing thing i'm not a dancer you don't have to be a dancer but if you want to move forward you dance anyhow to your breakthrough anyhow you are too big to dance your way to breakthrough i tell you you are too big to have an open heavens it will never never open ask david david the king the custodian of mysteries when he was dancing and rejoicing his arrogant wife came and said what is this i'm not saying you should dance in a nude and an ungodly way i don't know david's dance but i know the dance that is not david's dance let me balance it quickly i i was not there with david but i know the dance that is not david's dance there are many dance around that is not david's dance are we together david's dance comes from a genuine heart not a heart of seduction and stupidity david's dance is a genuine heart that is focused on god directed to him so let's we're talking about david's dance here david was dancing and the wife who was too big now came and said what is this thing you are doing you are a king and david said yeah 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 you don't know i was in the wilderness do you know what happened from there the wilderness that brought me here and i'm dancing and you don't know that i got you by dancing of course it's a mystery i've been practicing you are saul's daughter you don't even know how you just came like that you came as an inheritance the bible may not record it but i believe he finished his dance and carried his sling and went to goliath and said have you done your own dance goliath because if you have not done it you are about to go down hallelujah i believe in the mystery of praise please hear me the mystery of praise psalms 149 give it to us one of the mysteries will touch this night because this is a year of triumph and i'll be wicked if i don't share with you the secrets i operate in my own life psalms 149 please praise ye the lord sing unto the lord a new song listen and praise him in the congregation of saints verse 2 let israel rejoice in him that had made him let the children of zion be what in who their king three 
let them praise his name what let them praise his name in a dance let them sing praises to him with timbrel and harp for we are reading down for the lord taketh pleasure in his people he will do what beautify those who are humble enough he will beautify them with salvation next verse let the saints do what be joyful in glory let them sing aloud on their listen hold on just stay there let me explain this to you he says while you are lying down and all of a sudden do you know it's when people lie down that the devil brings thoughts i hope you know the bill is still there and all of a sudden oh lord you are good Shabarato i know you are faithful i know you are faithful let the even on their bed verse 6 now here is the warfare dimension of praise he said let the high praises of god be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands next verse to execute what vengeance upon the hidden and punishment upon the people not by chasing them that while you are praising and dancing it is vengeance you are speaking in the camp of the enemy to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron there is something called the written judgment to execute upon them what hold on how do you execute it your own is to mind your business knowing that life is spiritual i know they said you are not from so 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 tribe they walk together and sack you don't go telling people to hate these people go to your secret place and start praising and see what happens in that office are we together it says this honor have how many the honor ex of expressing breakthrough there are some things that god gave apostles prophets teachers but he said this one this honor of experiencing breakthrough have all the saints praise ye the lord cheap victories cheap victories by understanding life is spiritual and you carry all let me tell you another mystery carry all your challenges write it on a paper and dance before it put it on the ground and celebrate god before it like a madman don't worry just be that stupid and see what happens a child is not coming i know that me for sure i'm getting zero in this and that and begin to celebrate him celebrate him people will look at you and say what are you doing i'm praising him why what did he do no testimony you had start doing all these church things that people do like fools you're married you go and lock you and your wife and tell yourself we are dancing our next level when jesus was entering the city what did he do sat down on a donkey and had people praising and rejoicing it was that atmosphere it says psalm 100 please psalm 100 someone's life is about to change it says make a joyful noise hold on are you seeing another mystery joyful what Listen, praise the Lord. Listen, listen. It didn't say make noise. Making noise is not good, even for your health. It said a joyful noise. Hold on. Do you know what a joyful noise is? The revelation behind it. I'm not just shouting as an idiot. I'm showing you mysteries now. Praising a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Verse two. Serve him with gladness look at how many times god talks about this what is the protocol for accessing his presence come before his presence with not with mourning hold on oh god i thought the other time what well, don't give me any dream again if i keep seeing money in my dream and yet nobody sends me any alert are you not the god of heaven i've been serving in koinonia let me tell you what you are doing you are just moving backward believe me believe me you are moving backward because a, a broken spirit dryeth the bones. 
Verse 3. Know that the Lord he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. So have this revelation. He said we are the sheep of his pastures. He will not deny you anything. There's too much gloominess and mourning. That's why I, I listen to the news just for the purpose of leadership. But ask anybody who knows me. I have no time listening to all this analysis and all this junk. This and that is happening. Uh, this and that. Dollar is one million to this. I don't know what happened. No, but all I know is that for with joy shall you draw from the wells of salvation. Praise the Lord. If God calls this year a year of triumph, you must stop acting like mere men. They can predict your life. They know when money is missing from your life. Your face will show it. Anybody in this room that took what doesn't belong to him, except I'm not a member of Koinonia, you think you are being spiritual, but that's not how to disarm powers. Strange principles that will lift. I'm telling you, this principle of praise with a dance and a shout of praise is, I, permit me to use the word, a wicked principle. You want to see speed in your life? Do this and see what happens. Make up your mind complaining. The Bible says, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may be called blameless children of God. Right? The world is full of angry people. Do you know the classic sign that someone needs deliverance is anger? Anger. Offense. Everything offends you. Right now, after Koinonia, they say, turn and hug somebody. You just turn and found out that they left you alone. That alone is enough to bring anger. Are you not my partner? Why are you turning to the other person? You are trying to say I'm not good enough. You are giving the devil. Hold on, don't laugh. You are giving the devil access. I choose to be a happy person. Oh. You come, I'm, I'm, I'm a joyous, joyous, joyous. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, again, I repeat it. Koinonia, hear me. Many people will laugh at what you are doing. But they will not deny the result. The result will be strange. I guarantee you. I don't share my testimonies again so that it will not be as if I'm coming to Koinonia and all I'm saying. But there are things I will share with you you will not be able to sleep. That were gotten on the platform of engaging these mysteries. Let me tell you another strange thing. The spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy works with three things. One, a joyful noise. Listen, you can never, never walk in the prophetic without joy. The spirit, the spirit, the true spirit of prophecy works with joy. When I see angry people who say they are prophets, it's a joke. The spirit of prophecy. Let me tell you, most people who do different religions, do you know how they invoke the anointing upon mediums? They play instruments, they do music. You've seen masquerades. They are moving, playing with fire, somebody jumping on somebody, and then they reach a crescendo. When a spirit lands on the head of whoever is the medium, and all of a sudden he starts prophesying. Are we together? The prophet said, bring me a mystery. And as he began to play the mystery, it said the hand of the Lord came upon him. And then he began to prophesy. You shall not see wind, you shall not see rain, but the valley. Now that strange breakthrough, no rain, no wind, but the valley filled with water. Are we together? I'm telling you, I, have, if I believe with all my heart that I have fast-tracked somebody's life now with this revelation. With this revelation. Call your parents. All this complain. All this complain. My daughter, when will you marry now? Is it that there are no men in Koinonia? Is it that you are sitting outside? Eh? You, don't, you are not serving in any department. You, you think I don't know what people say all around? That's, that's nonsense. You can be in the third overflow, dancing your destiny, and somebody seated here. Huh? God will force him to go and do something outside and see his destiny there. So it's not, it's not about all these games that people play. No. The favor of God can come upon your life. 
you step into the office your director did not intend talking to you but you say um okay she was not in that list is her name there please add it you people should come and see me see even me joshua Selman, there are people who have helped that i didn't i didn't plan to i just saw the joy and the ecstasy look at frown and come and see if i cause your problems no come with joy you are bubbling i'm not saying fake it but they are happy the joy of the lord is their strength you are compelled to bless them watch the visitors that come to your house somebody just comes and knocks are you around say please can i get cold water before i talk to you you are in a hurry for them to leave because you see let me tell you depression has a presence depression has a presence someone can step into your life kill your joy close your heavens and walk away we are going to sing before the lord for two or three minutes and command some fearful results fearful results fearful results fearful results but before we get there i want you to open your mouth and blast in tongues for the next six to seven minutes from the depth of your heart lift your voice and pray my life is spiritual my life is spiritual my life is spiritual shabra shaka bas ke barato sobra da bala da bala da ba shekete prakoto sodo bagada bala da bala da ba my life is spiritual shaka barata das kabariete ko sodo bala da bala da ba life is spiritual life is spiritual life is spiritual so take it take it take it bala da bala da ba La kata paratos ko parata kashe lekete preteke to my breakthrough is spiritual my job is spiritual Maka prata kata barata kete don't stop don't stop you are aligning your spirit for breakthrough so beke teke teke te leko to pras kata balada 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 Shabratos kabrata kata balaba. Shobros koto parato seba. Shaba parata kaba baka taka te. Enke tos kos ke parato shobre yede balaba balaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Listen. You are going to say, Father. Take away any carnal interpretation. I've been interpreting things wrongly. That's why the doors have closed. I thought it was my mother. I thought it was my father. I obtain mercy and forgiveness for blaming people wrongly. Lift your voice and pray. I obtain mercy for wrong interpretation. I obtain mercy. I want you to pray this next prayer point with all your heart. Lord, the spirit of bitterness, anger, unforgiveness that has been tying down my next level, I cast it from my life. Lift your voice and pray. I cast it from my life. I cast it from my destiny. Pray, pray. So take to barato sabariata. It's a year of triumph. It's a year of triumph. La 
Challenge the spirit of fear and worry. Listen, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you something. These spirits work like twins. Fear and worry. Worry about whether or not you will make it. Worry about whether or not you will get the job. Fear comes and then you start worrying. Will I ever marry? Will I ever have a child? Will I ever do well? They are dangerous spirits. Lift your voice and curse them by the God of heaven. I cause worry. I cause worry. I cause worry. Shake it, shake it, I cause fear. You are of the devil. God has not given me the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear. I reject you. I reject you. I reject you from my life. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Listen, hold on, hold on, please. Hold on, hold on, hold on, so that we can make progress. We are going to give God, listen, hold on, please. We are going to give God three. I tell you, if you know the things that are happening in the realm of the spirit, just with this little dance, you can. Hold on, hold on. Listen, believe me when I tell you. These mysteries are fearful instruments of deliverance. We are going to give God, hold on, please. We are going to give God, listen, hold on, hold on. We are going to give God three shouts, three sets. Hold on, I will direct you. Just three shouts 
from your heart. I know that it may not make sense to you. But when I say shout, I want you to rejoice. And then the second and then the third shout. You see what happened in Jericho? The walls of Jericho. You will be surprised. Hallelujah. Hold on. Koinonia, hold on. Hold on. Just praise God. Just follow my directives. Some of you will not even be able to shout the third one. Hold on. Are you ready now? Listen. Hold on. Listen. It is not an ordinary shout. There is an anointing upon it. It's a shout of warfare. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe me. Believe me, you will command a level of results that will make you afraid. You are disarming powers beyond your imagination. Are you ready now? Fathers, we obey you. I pray that you honor your name. Put your name upon this shout. Shout number one. Are you ready? Now go ahead and shout. Keep going. Hallelujah. Help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. The second shout, listen, that we're about to shout is a shout of strange open doors. Hold on. Strange. Believe what I'm telling you. The anointing of the Spirit is upon me. A shout of strange strange open doors are you ready now that every closed door must swing open go ahead and shout now Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbatosh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen. Listen. Hold on, please. Now, please, just follow me so we we'll conserve time. This is what I want you to do. Listen, please. This is what I want you to do. After the third shout, listen to me. After the third shout, worshippers, you just begin to play. I want you to open your mouth and begin to call things. Call things. After the third shout, hold on, hold on. After the third shout, praise God. I know we're all going to be excited, but you try to stop. The moment the third shout is there, just set the atmosphere for us. I want you to begin to call things that be not. Call things that be not. You will be surprised, my brothers and my sisters. Are you ready now? Hold on. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have sent me to open up the eyes of your people. And Lord, I pray. I have done as you have told me to do. And I pray that you honor this third shout the bible says after two days he will revive us he said but in the third day he will raise us up lord let this be a shout of strange triumph let this be a shout of strange triumph strange triumph are we together now please make sure after the shout whether you are on the, under the anointing or open your mouth and speak call for things are we together 
Thank you, Jesus. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Go Open your mouth and begin to prophesy. 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 I call it forth. The next level of my destiny. I call it forth. The gift of man. The gift of man. Strange helpers. I call you. Arise for me. Strange anointing. So go, 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 go. Strange favor. Strange favor. I call you for. I call you for. I call you for. Help from Zion. I call for speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Break through to my life. Break through to my destiny. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Speak. Speak. You are a speaking spirit. Speak. Speak. Every Jericho standing before me. You crumble. Every Jericho standing before me. Every Jericho standing before me. Every Jericho standing before me. I curse you by the God of heaven. I call for strange breakthroughs. Strange breakthroughs. Strange revelations. Strange encounters of the spirit realm. Strange encounters with the world. A new wine. New anointing. New graces. I call for new mantles. New dimensions. Heavier weights of power. Heavier weights of grace. Hallelujah. 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 Fire is burning in this place. Listen. I want us to spare two minutes and rescue our families. Let them tap into this mystery. Begin to prophesy to the gates and say, I have praised on behalf of my family. I command that devil, you must go. I wage the warfare through my praise. I wage the warfare. Mato soto pakata. Rete kete kete bo soto balabalaba. I command it. Let my family members go. I command it. Cause delay. Cause spiritual lukewarmness. Wicked spirits. Powers. By the mystery of praise. By the mystery of praise. Hallelujah. For the things you have done and the battles you have won, only you are worthy of my praise. I magnify you. 
on your helpers wherever they are sado sata la crosseva rate ke te ko sodo ko to marada marada anyone who has the word of prophecy to be your helper i put pressure on their spirit this night and i command them to show up for you 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 I command them to show up for you. Listen. Listen. Hold on. I want you to understand this thing I've been teaching called the gift of men. You've heard me say this thing. Koinonia, I can kneel down and beg you. If you ignore what I'm saying, you will never rise. It's not whether you may rise or not. No helper comes by themselves. They are invoked through mysteries. No helper. Their people are too busy to come just to help you. But after what you have done tonight, oh no. No, come on. Listen. Listen. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Listen. I say it with every sense of humility. Over 80% of the people that so into this ministry, I don't know them. Some of them are not even koinonia people. I don't know where they are any part of the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You don't need to know nobody. You just need to know these mysteries. Know them. The mysteries know the people. Are we together now? My only prayer for you this night, and I'm going to keep praying it until I see that result in your life. It says, Strangers shall come and feed your flock. Strangers. Listen, hold on. Many of you have not entered that realm. You have only entered the realm of those who know you, and so for their love, they help you. You have not entered the realm of the ministry of strangers. Listen, when the prophet met with, listen, when the prophet met with Saul, he said, Saul, as you are going, you will meet three men. He didn't say three relatives. Three men, they are holding bread. They will salute you and they will give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. Men you don't know. Women you don't know. People who don't know you from Adam. They will arise and favor you strangely. They will arise and favor you strangely. I command them to arise and favor you strangely. Hear me. Anyone here or any family that has been in the same position for a long time. No, You have prayed, you have fasted. Nobody moves in your family. It's like the devil has kept them in one place. No job, no joy, no breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The same way he said, I set before you an open door. He said, no man can shut. I command the door to your next level open now. I command the door to your next level open now. Next level of ministry. Next level of business exploits. Next level of strategic relationships. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people who must show up in your life. What you need from them is not money. You need their credibility and endorsement. Listen. Some of us, our helpers want to come. But our helpers are afraid of us. Because they have never tested whether we have integrity or not. So they need somebody who has the influence and the charisma. Who has vetted you to commend for you. 
Joseph of Arimathea had to tell, he told Herod, he said, give Jesus to me. You think if the disciples went, they would not lock them up? I will keep drumming this. It's a revelation God gave me for you. You need the ministry of men. All this, I can do it alone. You need help. Oh. Let me tell you, you need help. There are families you need a helper. Everybody that has entered your family caused trouble and destroyed you. Because something called them. Your ignorance called them. Darkness called them. Disobedience called them. Who told you strangers cannot enter and help families? Are we together now? Whoever needs to speak for you where your voice cannot yet go in the name of Jesus this night not tomorrow, this night listen, I decree and declare may your discussion come to the ears of your helpers I command men to talk about you to your helpers I decree it I declare it I decree it I declare it I decree it I declare it listen hold on Mordecai was not there when they were talking about him Mordecai was seated somewhere are we together but when that anointing landed the king could not sleep he said go and bring me the chronicles bring me the books read them for me a king could not sleep and while they were reading it he heard that Mordecai did something and he said hold on hold on this guy did something and nobody helped him the voice that will command restoration for you hear me the voice that must say no this was injustice let's go back and correct it I call for that voice now I call for that voice now I call for that voice now we're rounding up tonight's service is a powerful service pay attention just receive these prayers i'm praying for you and see what happens you will now see the difference between you and ordinary men when you see the results you command then you will know that there are mysteries in this world life is spiritual hallelujah listen paul said i desire to come to you once and again he said but satan when the lord opened my eyes year before last i was i've not shared this with anybody i saw several people white men individuals several people and then in that vision i heard them talking about me and all of them were in a place like a circle you know how you use chalk to draw circle and the lord told me all these are people who have been destined to sow into my life to bless me and to announce what god is doing come on now man i prayed man i prayed i prayed i prayed with my spirit let me tell you when that thing happened i stepped into a strange level of favor the ministry of men there are men blocking you all there are men blocking your testimony the moment god wants your helper an enemy comes before them and says don't help her to me something happened don't help that girl she used to be a prostitute last year but you have repented now every enemy standing and speaking to your helper i'm praying this now anyone speaking to your helper so that they don't arise to help you i cost them by the god of heaven i cost them by the god of heaven i cost them by the god of heaven hear me i don't care who they are for as long as their job is to stand and change the minds of your helpers someone wants to marry you before he speaks to you a wicked person arises and says don't don't go to that girl i pray i cost their operations tonight 
I cause their oppression tonight. 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 Hallelujah. I pray for you. The grace to remain ever joyful. The grace to be free from worry. Yes. If there's anyone here and you don't sleep, simply because the moment you want to sleep, there is a wicked spirit that will bring issues. You have not paid this. You have not done this. Your child's school fees has not been paid. I command that this night will be the best sleep you have had in a long time. Hallelujah. I want you to wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. He said, let my prayers rise to you and the lifting up of my hands like the evening sacrifice. Lord, I wave my hands. We wave our hands to you. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Hallelujah. I want to give you an assignment. Please listen. Listen, from today till next Friday, just do this. It's a simple instruction. From today till next Friday, find any time of the day and dedicate just 10 minutes. Hear me? Sing and dance. Dance before the Lord. Just do it. I know it's seven days. It's not easy. You can do it as a family. You don't have to disturb neighbors. You can just stroll around to one forest somewhere. Just stand behind one tree and dance and watch the God of vengeance. I've been saying this thing, the God of... Let me tell you something. Hear me. Believe me, I speak to you as a servant of God. We declare this week a week of strange vengeance. Strange, strange vengeance. You may not believe it. Where records will be revisited and God will say, no, no, no. This family, since 1998, I destined them to be free. Who kept them? Who kept them? Lord, I pray that you honor this word. That as your people obey these instructions from this night, Friday, till next week, Friday, let there be strength. Please, do me a favor. I know some of you don't like sharing testimonies, but I would like to share the testimonies. Please. Do that even if it's just because of me on friday once you reach us march to the media we want to hear the strange testimonies i know that you have testimonies for other things but just for this night's service you will be surprised you will come back with strange testimonies hear me i pity any man this week that stands in your way as you dance except god is not the god of heaven it has been declared as this week a week of strange results vengeance see that's how to force your destiny to open you you play games with your destiny you will die like a chicken that's how to deal that's how to be recession proof when you force the gate on friday you will be surprised to see what will happen to people some of you from this night now as you are going you will read text messages alert favors different kinds of things hallelujah jesus we bless you because you are worthy you deserve all praise let the name of the lord alone be praised from everlasting to everlasting we declare that you are god worthy of all our praise Please keep standing everyone, we're going to pray but um, um, I'll just step back and allow Ejimi perform a function. Many of you may not know but tomorrow exactly Koinonia will be 6, 6, 11 of March. Hallelujah. Now, we're not doing any celebrations, we're not, the time to celebrate will come. But Ejimi will just say a word, charge our hearts and we'll just lift up a prayer of gratitude 
the worship team very sensitive people all we have to do is to just say thank you there's no time for any ceremony the time will come praise the lord as you mean you are good and your mercy is forever And 17 it's been six amazing years of God's faithfulness I don't know how about you but I'm excited that I have been a part of what God is doing in Koinonia if you are please I need you to put those hands together for Jesus hallelujah amen amen very quickly verse 15 and Moses went up into the mount and a cloud covered the mount and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it six days I want us to just put koinonia in that and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount S upon koinonia and the cloud covered it six years let's say that together and the glory of the Lord abode upon koinonia and the cloud covered it six years hallelujah hallelujah I'm a testimony to the cloud of the great and the mighty things God has done in this place through his servant Apostle Joshua Selman and through every single person that has keyed into the vision of this ministry and I want you to see what happened next it says and the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire the bible lets us know that we are a city that has been set on a hill we are going to lift up our, our voice and thank god that in the last six years there has been glory in this house it would have been a pitiful thing if there had been no glory i want you to look at your life and then begin to say lord thank you open your mouth and thank god year one year two year three year four year five and now the sixth year say lord we thank you look at every area of your life the glory of god has been revealed in you to you through you give god praise give god praise give god praise lord we're saying thank you we're saying thank you we're saying thank you for many of you you started out not knowing where god will lead you see where you are today see what god has done today look at what god has done all those following us online give god praise give god praise for the glory undeniable glory undeniable glory undeniable glory undeniable glory Lord we say thank you we are truly grateful Repato Samaria Kata Entemeria Shata for souls saved for destinies transformed for life touched bodies healed thank you Repo Samaria Kate Rendemeria Shata Balakato Shataya 
We give you praise. We give you praise, Father. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. Thank Him. Thank Him. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And Heavenly Father, as a family of faith, we want to say a very big thank you. For thus far you have led us. We thank you for the great and the mighty things that have happened in this glorious house by means of this symbolic and prophetic and apostolic movement called Koinonia. We are grateful to you Lord for the gift of Apostle Joshua Selman to this body. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you for lives transformed, for souls saved, for destinies unlocked, for purpose revealed, for miracles, signs, wonders. We say thank you Jesus. And as we enter into this new year, it's a new season for us. You have called that this is a season of triumph. On the left, on the right, above and beneath. We triumph all round in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. The path of the just is, a, is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Lord, we say that this is just the beginning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe that the best is yet to come, I need you to shout, Jesus! Let's clap those hands together. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Spiritual Intelligence Part 2 Just pray in one minute and say, Lord, visit me, speak to me tonight in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Pray. Speak to me, O oh God. My destiny depends on it. Speak to me. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever serve you.
and we will follow you all of our days. Lord, step by step, you lead us. Yes, we will follow you. For step by step, you led us. We have followed you. And step by step, you lead us. And we will follow you. Hallelujah. Jesus said that he was the light of the world. And he left us with a promise that no man who walked with him will walk in darkness. Lord, we acknowledge your light. We acknowledge your wisdom. I join your people to say thank you. Thank you for everything you have done. We will never, never be able to thank you enough for lives changed. Lord, if there is anything that has happened through my life, if there is anything that has happened through this ministry, we owe it all up to you. And we are not ashamed to say thank you tonight. Receive all the praise. This is what it's all about. And Lord, we decree and declare that we are committed to following you. I'm committed to following you. That you will speak to us and cause that we hear you, even when it does not make sense. Cause us to trust you. Cause us to believe you. May we never be ahead of you, O oh God. May we always allow you to lead. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we renew once again as a ministry our covenant of partnership. That, oh God, we remain followers, pursuers, seekers of your presence, seekers of your ways. You made your ways known to Moses. And Lord, we declare in the name of your Son that we will follow. It doesn't matter. We will follow regardless of how comfortable or otherwise it is we will follow you in the name of jesus so father we dedicate this moment very precious moment to you i thank you for your people the workers in this ministry the leaders in this ministry all those connected to this ministry the financial partners who have lifted our hands through their seats and sacrifices those who have labored in secret and in open to see your glory come i pray oh god that you bless them let no man go unrewarded receive all the glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you thank you spiritual intelligence i didn't meet the testimonies but i heard everyone rejoicing so i want to believe they were powerful testimonies let me just say something before we get to the word. Um, thank you so much for not only believing in the ministry, for believing in me and what God is doing in my life. I know that you love me. I know that you believe me. You believe in the anointing. Thank you so much for your partnership. But then I just want to say two things very quickly. Number one, I want you to trust the things you are learning here. Praise the Lord. Um, while we were on our way back from the trip, my mind was on the meeting and I was just thinking, there are very anointed men and women of God in this place who I would have easily just called and said, look, I'm so tired, I'm worn out, please can I rest? Have a crusade tomorrow and say, look, let me just rest. Bless the people of God. By God's grace, were connected to very anointed and blessed people that love me and believe in what God is doing and I could easily just call them and say look come and be a mighty blessing to the people of God I don't do these things by myself just because I am not replaceable that's not the idea there is a picture that the Lord has shown me about what he wants us to become are we together now every teaching listen carefully every 
truth that you hear being shared here was not emotionally fabricated to keep ministry going i wish you understand what goes in to bring every word here i preach an average of two to four messages every week it is hard work to prepare a message very hard work are we together aside from the prayers the preparation the physical constraint the research etc i do these things because there is something god is making us become please i want to encourage everyone don't just believe in me and love me and trust me which i greatly appreciate but submit yourself to the things you are learning these keys will make you become something there is an end some of us by the grace of god are already tasting of this mold we are already seeing how much our lives are becoming some of us are just catching up and others have tested of this for a while but i want to encourage you every series every teaching just follow them the way they are don't try to tamper with any equation you are given be that childlike and watch something happen in your life are we together i think it's quite arrogant for anyone to not have result and criticize anybody who has it archbishop benson idahosa said um, you only have a right to criticize a person when you can do twice what he has done once our society is full of people who believe they know what they are doing and you see the trouble about this pride is that the nonsense will not show now after years of wasting your time you will find out that the bible calls it shadow boxing but the apostle said we have not taught you cunningly devised fables the things you are learning here are not my ideas they are older than me the truths that come here represent the wisdom of god you hear me sing that song though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river there are people who have crossed this river we are not trying to invent something new there's nothing about the anointing that is new there's nothing about generational impact that is new so i want to encourage us pay attention to these things don't get so familiar and then don't listen no open up your heart don't just write don't just say amen don't just fall down don't just roll believe it receive it in your heart and be diligent be diligent to apply it listen i give you one guarantee let me tell you this and i've been saying this for many years you will never never fail if you listen to what i'm telling you believe me there are people who will think these things are just jargons and then after many years the danger is they will now have children and families yet they don't have an idea of the systems of god and they will frustrate a whole generation as a result of their ignorance please i'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and Do not take your word lightly. It is capable of changing my life. It is capable of bringing the anointing into my life. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever see it's your spirit that opens to me the treasures of your word and i will forever see your name i will see i will see all the wonders of your word i will see out for joy
last week we began a series that is aimed at giving us spiritual intelligence please listen it is dangerous to live in ignorance as to the systems of the spirit you hear me repeat some of these things again and again your victory and my victory in this life is not only dependent on what christ has done but dependent on our comprehending the same and applying the principles that will make it happen in our lives the disaster that occur in several lives regardless of what christ has done is proof that the work of christ by itself will not bring you results are we together there must be an understanding and we must know how to engage the word and um, there are a number of concepts that we discussed we took one last week which was the spirituality of life that was the first intelligence that the lord began to walk in our minds and we investigated this very thoroughly life is spiritual how many of you were blessed last week yeah it is important for us to understand the spirituality of life life is not scientific life is not intellectual life is not emotional life is spiritual are we together and the earlier we understood spiritual things and how to navigate the path of life the earlier we came to this understanding the better the swifter our progress would manifest there are so many people who trivialize the spirituality of life and um, it is to their detriment everything about your life to this moment is spiritual so we'll continue we'll take on one just four concepts in this series that i believe that the lord wants to burn in our heart number two god is almighty write it down and then listen to me number one life is spiritual that's the first intelligence you need to have if you want to reign second god is almighty deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 media let's walk together deuteronomy 10 17 you will never be able to obey god listen carefully you will never be able to do the giant things that the lord desires from you fulfill purpose an assignment if you do not have a revelation of the might of god you can have a revelation of his love you can have a revelation of his goodness but if you want to command victory in your life you need to know that god is not mighty he is all mighty deuteronomy chapter 10 okay verse 17 let me just read it from here if you have it let's read it together if you don't i'll just read alone one to read for the lord your god is god of gods a mighty and an awesome god who regarded not persons nor take it reward some version says not take it pride it says for the lord your god is what god of i've taught you what this means that every time one thing is compared against another is trying to show the all-surpassing excellency so he says this lord your god that you serve he's not just one of the gods he's not just one of the lords please listen this God that we serve is not just the best option of the many. He is the only option available. There are so many people who cannot obey God today. There are so many people who cannot believe God. So many pastors, businessmen, family people are unable to receive the instructions of god are unable to take steps of faith not because they cannot read their bibles they do not know how mighty 
and how great God is one of the things that you must burn in your spirit as you begin your journey to greatness is to know that God is mighty mighty Savior he can move the mountains listen to this song my God is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever he's the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the grave there is nothing the Lord will ask me to do that I will be afraid of no I have caught a revelation of how mighty he is the reason why many people cannot obey God is not because they are disobedient they do not know that he is mighty listen look at this come Sam if if I tell Sam I will buy you a car tomorrow he will not just laugh the first thing Sam will do is to look at me and evaluate me my capacity financially based on whatever information he has at his disposal is that true so Sam will look at me if Sam does not know me he will go and ask someone who knows me is this guy wealthy enough to be able to buy you a car at will if he receives a testimony of my ability Sam will now stand and say I can believe you is that true if I if I say right now everyone in Koinonia just be listening to me welfare department go and buy minerals just pass it around you will never look and say apostle don't deceive us how much is minerals are we together so it's easy to believe me because subconsciously you have an understanding that I am able now if I say everybody just sit down we're going to pass car keys around you will say amen but what you mean is the prophecy for car keys because you look around and imagine so when God says I will bless you your understanding of him will judge what he has said and you say Lord I trust you but it's well uh, you have a track record of fooling men God is almighty so God can speak to you and say son do this do that let me tell you something God never gives you instructions based on your ability he speaks to you as though he's talking to himself so don't be surprised to hear how how challenging his instructions will come when God speaks to you he speaks to himself so he's not going to degrade his standards just because your mind is trying to comprehend him are we together it's up to you by the ministry of the word and the spirit to rise in understanding and get to a point where you will count him faithful that was the testimony of Abraham the Bible says Abraham although he was an hundred years he counted God faithful and so he wavered not at his faith through unbelief one day God will stand up and say son it's time to build a big cathedral son it's time to do this I will be stupid to stand and say God don't don't disappoint me no no I have made promises to people as a man and I've seen how they just rejoiced oh I will give you ten naira I will help you to pay your school fees and they jump I've not given them any money didn't give them any check they just started jumping around what if I change my mind you don't think I will so you are happy our unbelief is proof we do not know God is Almighty so when he told you you will marry you are still asking him question Lord can't you just give me date and let two of us rest <laughs> I will bless you and you will prosper oh God when when do you know do you know worry is a sign of lack of faith worry believe me when i tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth worry is a sign of lack of faith no when he's in charge when you are in charge with him there is no reason no reason no reason this is the revelation that is responsible for confidence when you see people move around it's not as if there is a charm in their pocket but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able looking at the great things that God has done today 
Yena is not six years. It's just koinonia that is six years. The meeting here. But even at this, it is still a humbling experience. Watching the things that God has done by His grace. Seeing the many things. Seeing His word come to pass. Do you believe Him? Do you truly believe God? Don't tell me you believe God until you know that He is mighty. Not just that he's mighty, he's willing to hold your hands. When a man is willing to help you, and you know that person has capacity to help you, you trust him. The word trust is from the word bata. It's best described, Pastor Alpha's son is not even considering whether his father's hand is tired. He's sitting happily and playing, while the father takes responsibility for bringing the child here. It's called trust. The child has had a track record in his little life that my father loves me but my father is also strong strong enough and so he can afford to move around not minding whether the father is uncomfortable or not did god ever tell you he's tired of holding you did god ever tell you he he needed assistance his hand was paining him god is not moses part of Israel the Bible says he neither sleeps what kind of a being is that you don't sleep nor slumber the Bible says there is no searching of his understanding there's too much unbelief there are very few people that believe God you see it in their lives although they claim they trust him but the, 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 the way we act shows we don't trust him I believe him. That's the song. He's able. He's able. He's able to bless you. He's able to keep you. He's able to bring his word to pass in your life. God is almighty. He's not going to borrow power from someone else and return it. No. He didn't store the power somewhere else. He's not signing like a check, like you go to the bank and plead with them to do a transfer. No. He's almighty. No man voted him into power. Listen. He doesn't store his anointing somewhere and he's insecure if they will take it. The Bible says, once have I spoken, twice have you heard, uh -huh, help me, that all, 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 he never said he's the only one who can use it, but he said it belongs to him alone. Witches can use it by certain manipulations of the laws of the spirit. But hear me, brothers and sisters, all power, the power to make wealth, kabaratoshia, the power for favor, the power for increase, the power for breakthrough, the power for children, the power that swallows up challenges, that power belongs to God. Know this. Listen, let me tell you. Ask anyone who knows me. I thank God I've taught you about the gift of men. I've taught you about the ministry of men. But God cursed the eye. The day I will leave God to put my eye in a mortal man. Believing that he's the one who will help me. Look, in my little life I have seen the inconsistencies of men. It is foolish for me to sit down and tie my destiny to the word of a man. No sir. No sir. No sir. I judge him faithful. I can tell you I want to help you and get angry tomorrow and say, Pastor Alpha, you offended me. I will punish you. I won't help you again. That's a man for you. I can say I want to help you, but me too, I was expecting help from, so, from somebody. How powerless that can be. You are standing in the middle of help to help, but there's no helper of God. He checked around and nobody was greater than him, so he swore by his name. That by these two immutable things it is impossible listen I'm speaking to someone here you better believe God and say Lord if you spoke to me about your my destiny let's go I believe I like Joshua and Caleb he said let us go up at once look at David who is this uncircumcised Philistine all these 
please share about our lives share about the future share about ministry will i be rich will i marry will i have children how many will my pregnancy stay will i die will a plane crash will they can't jam me all those things are resolved hear me will crowds come for my meeting what if they get angry one day and don't like me again those thoughts are a product of a lack of knowledge about how mighty god is i sing that song again savior he can move the mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave savior people talk like this I, I know what some of you are thinking when you hear people talk like this you just say they are lucky I mean you have food to eat you have this thing they kept in front as though we were born like that let me tell you something very few people in this life even historically were ever born with any privilege it takes an understanding I remember clearly when the Lord would speak to me in the secret no results no results but i believe him i remember when he told me he would anoint me and he would do great things i remember when he began to give the blueprint of eni the blueprint of i remember those little instructions he gave on our way to crusade grounds hoping the world will work let me tell you something Jimmy. come come let me tease this guy small i love him he's my friend you see when we started out let me tell you something that time it wasn't like a crowd like this there were few people now i remember clearly i told them that when we went to the crusade ground we we're going to meet all kinds of people blind sick and all of that and i think he thought we were joking and we had already planned that that time everybody was a minister it wasn't like you're in welfare you don't mm -mm. So when it was time to pray you would just choose at random you didn't have the privilege to know what was wrong until you stood in front of the person are we together now and i remember very clearly ejimi then and jakes when i started saying all those things ejimi got troubled one time and he said come on let's let's really find out are we going to how you know trying to find out i hope this anointing works i hope those devils are going to be cast out i remember I, I hope you can remember i remember one of the, the first day of the crusade two of our ladies they now went to meet a woman you remember the story they went to meet a woman who was deaf and dumb you know they came with all the zeal had received impartation we had fasted our lives i mean we're looking like skeletons and then the ladies now laid hands you know oh god you spoke to joshua selman and i'm telling you that woman was just looking like this no miracle no healing it was so embarrassing the ladies tried how many of you know that when you try you go around and go around nothing happens i remember one person a jimmy i think it was a jimmy that wanted to minister to a young boy and the boy looked at him and said can you see that tree sir he said we have tight people on it he said he can go and call what did he say he wants to go to the market and call the other people that tied so yes <laughs> a very small child i remember the shock on a jimmy's face <laughs> listen we didn't look like much then but we believed him the third day of the crusade the deaf and dumb woman spoke her ears open remember the first day nothing happened it was so embarrassing so embarrassing for the ladies they came and met me i said don't worry try it do it again your faith and then on the third day i just got angry i said okay you people have tried look this woman let's deal with this thing before these villagers kill us here 
see you know why i'm telling you this and why i called him it was faith i remember while we were preparing for the crusade he took his computer his personal computer he was the only one who had a computer then not a laptop a big screen computer he took everything and put it on sale to carry all the money and supply for the crusade these are hidden stories that you may never never know never know i dedicated my scholarship 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent for the crusade sacrifices why because we knew god was mighty at a point we didn't have the money to pay where we lodged people as at that morning we were in trouble so we went to greet the king when we went to greet the king we exchanged pleasantries greeted him in the palace and then prayed for him we had a session with the pastors a pastor's conference it was a wonderful time people sold some seeds plus the seed the king sent that was how we gathered the money listen there was no assurance no uncle no auntie no partner but god everybody shout but god thank you jimmy i love you god bless you but god when you bring god into the equation the calculation changes you have to know that i had fainted the bible says but god but god the psalmist said if the lord had not been our help now may israel say if the lord had not been our help listen every other thing should happen to you but god i'm prophesying to somebody the shame should come but god the interceptor every other thing should come but god the trouble should come but god when you add god to the equation the calculation changes God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent one of the mysteries that are responsible for fearsome results responsible for the strange breakthrough in the lives of men is absolute trust in God based on an understanding of who he is he says be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might the revelation that he is mighty be strong let your stability be upon that i know i do not have the rent but god is faithful i don't know how it will happen but one thing i know is this god will help me he said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help he says my help cometh from the lord the maker of heaven and earth apostle my father is dead i understand but god is still alive apostle my mother is dead my sisters have vowed that because i became a christian no sponsor apostle there is there is no helper no there is a helper he's the one who can help men look when god decides to come into your life and help you you will be scared at the result there is something called the help of men we are products ebenezer thus far has the lord helped he says uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the lord there are many people who remove god out of the equation of their lives so they look at you and say but i'm more intelligent than you why is your life making progress because i i kept i didn't add god i put him in front of me there are many arrogant people believing they they do every calculation by themselves then they say god where are you just come and join the queue some of us have learned we put god in front and we foolishly follow foolishly follow if he moves this way wherever we are we turn back and say god let's keep going he guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake he said yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death what will happen i shall fear no evil why not because i'm masculine for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me then he says thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over do you trust god 
do you believe God is a little teaching but let me tell you something your life will be challenged by circumstances that will require your faith in God no matter how hard working you are a day will come the only person you can cry to I want you to glue this understanding hold his hands and never let him go you're all i want you're everything you're all guarantee to your journey of life is his presence and his word his presence and his word men will fail you not may fail will fail prepare for it the best and the most reliable of all of us will still fail brothers and sisters please listen to me so that you stop yourself from receiving heart shattering heartbreak i don't trust men no i don't I receive of their ministry but only as accredited by God I have pledged my life that anything God cannot give me let no man claim he can give me no sir no sir if God cannot lift this ministry I will be a liar together with any other person who joins me to believe no he said which of you by worrying can add one cubit one cubit one strand of hair Is God blessing us? Everybody say God is almighty. God is almighty. In, my in my life. Say it again. God is almighty. God is in my life. Lift your voice in one minute and say Lord I permit you to show your might. I'm tired of doubting you. I'm restraining your hand. I'm restraining your hand. Shata sota bakariada. Ah, there is more that you can do. There is more. There is more that you can do. I have restrained your hand through my unbelief. Shedas halabariyakata. They limited God by saying, "Can God? Can God? Can God bless me in Zaria? Can He bless me in Zaria? Where are the helpers? No." God I serve is dependable. Dependable, dependable. Hey, dependable God.
will soon sit down but in one minute i want you to look at the mountain that has threatened god in your life and i want you to prophesy say my god can handle you lift your voice and pray say it my god can handle you i may not have what it takes but my god can handle you no my god can handle you. shame and reproach I may not be able to do anything about it but my God can handle you the stagnation and delay the lack of results and lack of progress my God can handle you I do not fear my God can handle you no one above him no one above him thank you Sam he says great is our Lord and of great what power then he says his understanding this is the mystery behind his power his understanding is infinite now when you meet such a man never leave him his understanding is infinite great is our Lord and of great power he says his understanding his comprehension is infinite I trust him I believe him you know we when Ogun we came in um, left this morning and um, while I just passed the whole Lagos about an expressway down I kept seeing different camps prayer camps belonging to different ministries and I thought for a while one day all of them were in their rooms and God came to them and said I will make you great do you believe me and they were stupid enough to say yes some could not speak English but they said yes <clears throat> had no connection some no education but they said yes it is when the results happen people start admiring you no the mission is follow me if you can have that rugged faith to follow him you will return with a testimony please i want you to bond this every time challenges overwhelm you every time you come to a point where you don't know what to do meditate on the might the might of god i like angel michael when they started fighting with lucifer over the body of moses this is what he said he said i will not bring any railing accusation against you but this is my verdict the lord i invoke a power greater than me the lord rebuke you you've been trying to fight many battles on your own it will soon kill you there are some battles that will eat you up on your own there are many young men 
trying to fight the battle of finances by themselves i'm brilliant i'm not daft you will soon die the 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 reality of the economy will swallow you up you better humble yourself and say lord lead me i'm not ashamed to declare that i do not know if you don't lead me the bible says trust in the lord with all your heart proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 6 says and lean not on your own understanding right it says in all your ways verse 6 now acknowledge him and he will make straight your path 7 says be not wise in your own eyes it says fear the lord and turn away depart all this do you know why many people don't trust god this macho man bold face thing that they want to do to life listen it's good to be bold but we make our boast in the lord when you remove him out of the question you are boasting and you must defend yourself indeed we make our boast all day long the psalmist says your confidence in life is not just because of your intellectual capacity your confidence in life is not just because you think you went to school go and find out how many graduates are moving around as if they are holding a tissue paper your confidence in life is not because you think you can speak english your confidence is not because you think you look good there is one mighty strong strong mighty you threaten me he will answer you mm. you will hear my voice in that equation he will echo and when god speaks everything if you speak to me it's only me that will respond to you but when god speaks everything will answer everything Please tap into this understanding. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. Don't ever say they are basic. Leave God out of your life and watch the way the enemy will eat you. Leave the understanding of the almightiness of God and show me how you will ever build a house. Show me how you will ever build a ministry. Show me how you will ever build a business. It will, it will so shock you. Take God away. That is a, a, a mountain that cannot be surmounted. But bring him into the equation. And he will cause it to tremble before you. Now the thing is men don't see him. They see only you. So they think you are the one doing it alone. It's up to you to be smart enough to keep his presence by being an usher and pointing men back to him. And say look I know you saw only one person walking but we are two. And actually I'm only the second of the two not the first. There is one in front of me. I am a product of his wisdom. I am a product of his leadership. There is this treasure, he says, in earthen vessels, that the excellency of power might be of God, not of the vessel. Please repent from this unnecessary, vain confidence in yourself. I will do this. I am smart. The way I'm anointed, it's impossible for me to not have an anointed ministry. You are joking. Go and find out how many people see Jesus almost every day and don't have up to 10 people in their church. It's not because they are going to hell. If it does not give you these keys. It says, a man can receive nothing except it is given. If it is not given to you, you can't have it. It's impossible. What an awesome... God you are You're an awesome Awesome God What an awesome God you are You're an awesome Number three ready the third key man will always have a role to play man will always have a role to play in fulfilling God's word in his life man will always have a role to play I'm giving you spiritual intelligence so you don't waste your time asking why things are not happening man will always have a role to play someone is being delivered already from this statement your role is not taking the place of
it does control prophecy but it controls manifestation between thus saith the lord and it came to pass you have a role deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 man will always always the love of god is unconditional but his blessings are conditional the love of god is unconditional but his blessings are conditional here's what it says and it shall come to pass if thou shalt uh -huh, listen diligently hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe pay attention then number two to do all his commandments which i commanded this day that the lord thy god will do what set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee what's the condition if thou shalt hearken verse 2 just stop there if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord thy god he didn't say if god speaks he will set you on top as powerful as his voice is it requires a partnership are we together how many believers sit down there is a very sad statement that is used especially around the north that's to mean it was so prepared by god no i believe in the sovereignty of god there are things that are written there is how god can veto in a man's life but it is not in his character to veto over everything are we together so if i'm poor is the will of god if the ministry refuses to grow is the will of god no 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 the will of god is not hidden he has made known unto us the mystery of his will it's clear i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 11 thoughts of peace and not of evil not of evil not of evil not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end that means if my life is not bringing me a future and an expected end i know that something is wrong i can't sit down stupidly say no this this has to be god no 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 i know his ways it's not a mystery i know there are challenges i know there is a fullness of affliction i know there are seasons but i also know that the times are in the hands of god he said until the word of the lord came to him the word of the lord tried him right but when that word came he prevailed over it in the dealings of god with man you don't suffer forever no sir understand the ways of god so that you don't sit down giving god thanks over things you should be rebuking hallelujah if the membership of koinonia begins to reduce i won't sit down and say it's the will of god he's driving wrong people that's nonsense we know that there is a spirit destroying men because it is the will of god that all men might be saved all men there's no such thing as the crowd does not matter it does the ministry of the kingdom is a ministry of multitudes when you understand your partnership you will know what is demonic you will know what is a process you will know what to give thanks for and what to cast and bind there are too many believers who just sit down and say whatever will be will be unfortunately it's what you don't like that will be are we together everybody hates me they are not nice to me say well maybe that's how my life is it will continue like that you have not sat down to say could there be the manifestation of an evil spirit in my life that is bringing this rain of bad luck i'm such a nice personality but why is it that people cannot help me when you begin to probe and look at things then the lord will show you your own role and say this is what you have neglected this do and you will see the hand of god everyone say i have a role say it loud i have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny say it again I have a role to play in the fulfillment of God's word over my life and destiny say it one last time I always have a role to play in the fulfillment 
of God's word over my life and destiny. Never allow anybody, listen, never allow anybody indoctrinate you into believing you will sit down and cross your leg and things will happen. No, sir. Even science refuses that. Even science refuses that. Nothing moves by itself. Right? Yeah. The first law of mechanics. Science people. A body remains in a state of uniform motion or a static state till an external force acts upon it. Otherwise. Meaning if I leave this here and there is no force acting, it will remain there forever. Your destiny is like this object. It will remain in one place. The day God wants to change, I know my God, He will arise. You know your God, but He will not arise. You provoke His hand to arise for you. God will deliver me. You people should just keep watching. No. There is what you must do. Good master, what shall I do to be saved? That's why the man was rich. What shall I do? He knew he had a role to play. Not all God saved me. That's what the other guy said on the cross. We are here. It's true. We are thieves. But what did you even say? And Jesus looked at him. The other one said, look, we are sinners. Lord, we take responsibility. Say, you, you will be with me this day in paradise. The other guy, still on the cross as a thief and a criminal, was not repentant. I'm somebody who is obsessed with a sense of responsibility. I, I detest irresponsibility of any kind. Especially spiritual irresponsibility if my life will rise is up to god in partnership with my cooperation still on this point i want you to write this down are you getting blessed tonight just listen to what i'm telling you and you'll be surprised to see how your life will change write this down still on that point three your part will have to be based on knowledge and understanding your part will have to be based on knowledge and understanding in as much as it is important to take action that action must be based on knowledge and understanding not emotions not suggestions not guessing you see the thing about god is he clarifies what role you have to play moses stretch forth your rod it is a moses just do whatever you want to do i'm just there no stretch forth your rod jericho joshua tell the people to go around jericho specific instruction once every one of the six days and on the seventh day they go seven times after that together with the priest they raise a shout specific rule proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 we we'll look at two scriptures so many people are attempting to cooperate with god but they are doing it in ignorance now when you when you walk in ignorance you alienate yourself from the possibilities that are that are contained in god proverbs 4 verse 7 let's look at it proverbs 4 verse 7 let's turn it here for time's sake proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 it says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom then it says and with all thy getting do what get understanding wisdom tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it wisdom tells you to cook understanding tells you how to combine the ingredients wisdom tells you you have a great destiny understanding tells you the path to take that's why he says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path there are similar roles but they are not the same a light to your path direction a lamp to your feet guidance a light to your path direction listen if you come and you're looking for direction i'll tell you okay go left you're going to see two roads follow the left one turn that's direction but when i tell you let's walk together and we get to a place i say okay move with me that's guidance the word of god both guides and directs 
Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So God shows you where to go and guides you on how to go there. Make sure that you understand what to do before you start doing it. Don't just say, wow, this tight. Let Okay, since prosperity is tied to tithing and all of that, let me just tight. You may be taking the action, but is it based on knowledge and understanding? You can frown your face and come and squeeze an envelope and stand as if you are going to stone God with money and drop it in the offering basket as though you are bribing a man and go back and find out that your heaven still remains closed. Because it is not the substance, it is the understanding. The insight is what gives life to the action. Are you seeing that now? Yeah. So you are praying for the sick and you are saying in the name of Jesus be healed. But you think it's just about speaking. So you are saying be healed, be healed, be healed. And the person is not being healed. You are still mentioning the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be anointed. The power of God will touch people right now. Everybody, you ask them to shout everything. I receive, shout Jesus, shout fire, shout water, shout. And everybody is just looking at you like a rock. I say, you are such a bunch of unbelievers here. You are, you are trying to insult the grace of God on my life. Then you start making reference to meetings. That's what people do when they don't have results. Is it not you that came in 1991? Remember that meeting? <laughs> Bible says Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't bring Jesus of yesterday for us. We want to see the Jesus of today. Alive and strong. But that's what happens to people. Let your action be based on knowledge. Knowledge. Okay, what is the revelation behind tithing? Why does tithing open the heavens? Wow! Tithing is my spiritual circumcision. Tithing is my proof of obedience. Tithing is not a proof of love. Giving is a proof of love. Tithing is a proof of obedience. Tithing does not mean you love God. Tithing just means you are obedient. Because an exact figure was given to you. So I begin to study it. I see those who gave their tithe and the results that followed. And then light breaks out. And now I package my tithe with understanding. So I come and while I'm singing I'm in the worship team and I'm trusting that every time I lift up my voice people get blessed I know that it's not just a nice voice and beautiful melodies I go and begin to study what is it about music and worship and I begin to find out ah this is how it works now on the strength of that understanding when I lift a song I'm lifting that song from an understanding that understanding will allow a dimension of the grace of God to flow through that song and you find out that people become a reflection of your understanding never do things because people are doing it spend time to seek knowledge and understanding then you take an enlightened step take an enlightened step everybody is doing business to prosper you too you go and do it no what is the purpose of it Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the Bible talks about those who are alienated alienated from the life of God through ignorance alienated from the life of God through ignorance through ignorance through ignorance are we together yeah there are people who although they are supposed to be walking in certain realities they exempted themselves through ignorance being alienated from the life of God and the Bible says through ignorance I am always passionate about a revelation of the areas where I do not know I'm not too proud to learn I always want to know what am I doing wrongly what when I find knowledge that is relevant to me I jump at it with all my heart I know you have been taking action but is it based on insight is it based on revelation you saw people anointing themselves you went to go and buy goya oil and you brought it and all of a sudden you opened a bottle and drank small rub small on your head rub small on your hand went to sleep and his spirit sat on you 10 minutes later and he said my god 
with this oil yes with the oil you carried your bible and put it under your bed and while you slept you had the worst dream even the day you slept watching a film you had a good dream but now you put your bible because it's not in actions revelation there are too many people who don't pay attention to revelation revelation Ephesians 1 17 Paul speaking says for this cause I Paul bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know come into a comprehension come into an understanding of a reality it is important for us to know I like it to say in the name of Jesus Lord take away ignorance from my life say it again take away ignorance you know let me tell you something the little understanding that God has given me about certain kingdom realities the mysteries of the kingdom I watch how people break these laws every day and want to succeed and want to do well I watch pastors break the laws that bring success in ministry I watch business people break the laws that bring success in business. I watch leaders break the laws that bring uncommon results. I watch people who want the anointing break almost every law that brings it. You see, enlightenment is very powerful. Because when you are moving in darkness, you don't even know. And so you keep trying. This is not working but i fasted 30 days i thought at the end of 30 days an angel will appear to me and say from this day i give you a mantle receive it you collect it and, and nothing happens and yet you see how effortless certain people move in the grace and the power of god as though god owes them his presence and power you've got to find out it's not just in saying the power of god is moving it's not just in saying this and that and that no as I passed Lagos about an expressway today, I saw the predictability of the results of the people. You know, most of those fathers of faith came from the same background. The same background. The Apostolic Church, Aladura, CAC, that background. Regardless of what they have now. So, certain foundational things were functional. Regardless of what the ministry is. Crowds, space they got a revelation of space they don't buy small things they buy kilometers not plots and expand it i've had the privilege to see photos of some of these ministries in some nations that are racist nations yet they give them land it's a grace now they may not have as much revelation as you do but sadly they have more results which do you prefer the end of everything brothers and sisters is results herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit not that you learn about plants that you bear much fruit you can learn all you can about plants but if you cannot bear fruit you are not glorifying the father your action must be based on light and that means you must contend for light let me tell you how i study i write out the areas of my life where i have seen some measure of result and i celebrate and thank god then i write out the areas in my life where i'm trusting god for results or greater results and then i begin to study from the word of god and secondly from the life of those who have commendably produced results in that area that's how you get results that's how you get results I'm not going to study somebody who is not working in the anointing if I want to work in the anointing. I will love the person. I will respect the part, the fact that he is part of the body. But he has nothing to teach me about the anointing. He's not working in his life. So I will find somebody who represents the hand of God to the degree to which I desire. And humbly study to the degree to which I desire. There may be many of them, but I must find the one that reflects my expectation. Then I study follow them the bible says who through faith and patience obtain not are obtaining they have obtained the promise hallelujah 
run away from ignorance run away from it start acting blindly don't just act emotionally the moment you panic blood of jesus holy ghost fire honestly holy ghost fire and these demons you are hearing holy ghost you don't know what the fire of the holy ghost does you don't even know whether it exists you don't even know whether the blood of jesus is there and what it should have so you are just praying holy ghost fire holy ghost fire blood of jesus it will never i, I refuse to believe it then you start crying even you you know you didn't believe what you said because at the end you just stop, stop praying and say god is this how you leave me May people of confidence arise who know you see when you are walking by light you will not stop regardless of the result because you know the result will show it's like driving right when you are driving somewhere you don't get tired after five minutes and say Can't, we've not reached let me park this car you keep moving why because you know you will get there when people start practicing certain things and stop it is because they don't have a revelation that that is the key for every door there is a key you have a bunch of keys in your hands the bible calls them the keys of the kingdom you have to painstakingly find out which one opens which door i can have a bunch of keys in my hands that does not mean the doors will open how many of you have different doors in your homes that have different keys you can see one small and then another one big the keys don't replace themselves you have to know which one there are certain padlocks you open them in a very interesting way there are others you can close your eyes and just shoot it and turn and it opens all in the same house so there are things you can just come and effortlessly solve but there are others you have to look at it with the eyes of the spirit ah this is what i do this is what i do and i get results in the name of jesus christ i pray for you may the days of shadow boxing come to an end in your life efforts that are not done out of knowledge efforts that are not done out of out of accuracy you will begin to be circumspect and every action of yours will start producing strange results in the name of jesus christ let's take two more and then we'll pray is god speaking to you thank you jesus number what number four evil still exists write it down evil the reality of darkness the depravity the existence of wickedness the existence of darkness is a revelation that you must comprehend if you want to walk in victory walk in triumph and have spiritual intelligence listen it is not only weakness it is foolishness to ignore the presence of evil evil still exists first john chapter 5 verse 19 let's turn there write it down and turn here. first john 5 19 Jesus, thank you. Can you play the guitar too for me, Binga? Just follow him and play. God wants to do something in this place. First John 5 19. It says, And we know that we are of god and then it says apologies for the projection issues i'll just read from here you listen to me carefully and we know that we are of god then it says and the whole world lieth it didn't say receives visitation the world is lying like you say this pulpit is lying on a a rock a carpet then it says the whole world lieth where the wickedness listen i want to give you spiritual intelligence the condition to be a victim of any attack from the devil is that you are born not that you do anything wrong or right the moment you find yourself on this side of god's kingdom immediately there is a contention 
every human being on earth is a potential battle axe satan will not wait till you become one he starts attacking you from birth he knows that everyone born of a woman carries the potential to be used by god are we together yeah. apostle what have i done who did i offend have you heard that that culture driven terminology God, this one that demons are against me nothing works in my life i didn't offend anybody you don't have to there is a story that predates your existence listen to the teaching pulling down strongholds and a number of other teachings warfare series i teach there very extensively on the reality of wickedness many of us trivialize it until it attacks you no the bible says woe to them who are at ease in zion scripture clearly tells us that this world living is a warfare living is a warfare i think it's dr paul Enche who says that the world is a battlefield not a playing ground it's a real battlefield just start getting blessed and watch people hate you for doing nothing you are trying to show you have money who did you offend nobody lie down and sleep and let someone not be able to sleep he wakes up and is angry why are you sleeping this is the world we live in you have a neighbor who looks at you and sees you dancing giving glory to god and he says all these arrogant people i will deal with you that begins attacks in your life please listen to me i'm sharing with, i'm giving you spiritual intelligence i have factored in my life that every day of my life until jesus comes somebody somewhere hates me enough to want to see me dead somebody somewhere hates me enough to go so only god knows how many people are in a herbal shrine now calling my name while i'm sleeping only god knows how many people are saying let him have a plane crash this year let him have a car accident this year so that all the mouth is making about the word of god so that people will be discouraged the problem is never the enemies the problem is you but to ignore their presence is a joke the psalmist listen judas one who was close to jesus used a kiss a kiss is supposed to be a good thing a sign of love but to someone it was a sign destroy him brothers and sisters hear me i don't mean to insult your civilization but i'm sorry to inform you that witchcraft is real say it after me witchcraft is in everyone's village here everyone is in the city is in zaria somebody somewhere is looking for blood and they are hoping that your own will be the one they are finding <laughs> you better grow up fast enough to believe what i'm telling you the whole world lieth in wickedness a man goes out in the morning and returns back with a sack letter that was the happiest day of his life but he returned back ask joe Job was minding his business and consultations were happening in the heavenlies and all of a sudden everything began to fail in his life brothers and sisters i can look at a life and know that this life is under attack i have seen marriages under attack all of a sudden love dries up between the husband and wife for no reason the man is angry with the wife you ask him many times i counsel them i say sir what exactly did your wife do he say apostle i can't tell you this is exactly what she has done but i'm tired of this woman i have to look for another one then you know that hell is breaking loose madam why do you hate this man i'm tired i've not enjoyed my marriage from the day we've been married for 17 years not one day of joy madam you didn't laugh on your wedding day not one day of joy not one day of joy <laughs> yet you see videos of happy moments when they dance together not one day of joy and she's planning to leave that guy by jesus for sure a man prays for the arrival of a child and have you seen people who look at their children and regret that they were married 
not because the child did anything from the day this child came our finance doesn't stay again what sort of a child is this I don't need a word of knowledge to know that your life is under attack all I need to know is did you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ do you mean business about your destiny then your life is a project for darkness how can we make the word of God fail in pastor Alpha's life how can we make promise not become that thing how can we frustrate the purposes of God upon Benga's life that's the devil for you let me tell you something with Satan he's a patient fellow don't take his patience as foolishness he can be patient and wait for 20 years until the ministry expands enough for you to not pray again then he comes just like he said he would and destroy your life are we together there are many of us right now I know your life is under attack by your prayer life I see it you don't need a word of knowledge I know your life is under attack by the bitterness things you never would concede before are now at work in you I see the anger and the resentment you hate everybody for no cause it's not you Peter Peter Satan desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren I look at a man and know his life is under attack all doors of finance is closed then four children become sick in one day he's coming the thief cometh not but to steal you always see his signature when he comes he leaves the traces a family that were once happy all of a sudden from nowhere you will see the lady will just come with one kind of trouble somewhere the guy will come with one kind of trouble somewhere the guy will start smoking he will come and speak to his father and say from today I'm a man you talk to me I slap you just when he's doing that they sack him from work just when he's doing that something happens his car packs out brothers and sisters it is not a test it is oppression hallelujah all of a sudden mysteriously people start dying within a region have you seen that happen just like in three weeks or one month men fathers of people just go away mothers of people just go away brothers and sisters just go away just like that five people lose their jobs within two weeks in your house don't tell me it's not an attack someone promises you i will give you a job even says complete everything you travel around the last stage someone just wants to sign and say what did you say your name is again femi me i said i will help you call this person for me did I say this guy was part of them? You say, sir, we even drank minerals that day. He said, look, I can't remember drinking any minerals. Leave this place. I have seen witchcraft life in the lives of people. I have seen families under attack. No one rises. You rise beyond certain limits. The devil will not stop you. But one day something happens and it crashes you. There are ministries within certain regions that don't reach three years. Zaria is one of those places. The lifespan of any ministerial impact in this city is three years. After three years, a scandal must arise or something must arise and destroy you. If you survive three years, you are truly anointed. You see it happen. A musician comes into the city. They are inviting him to every church. They exhaust your grace in two months and dump you. They are looking for the next person. There is such evil like that. There are men of God like that. There are seasons where they are relevant. For one year, two years, they are the talk of the town. Almost every church invites them. After that, you see them walk upon the street. There are names in this nation and around the world I cannot even begin to mention. People who were inspirations, when you mention them, they represented certain dimensions. Now they are as silent as a dead body. Wickedness is real. Evil is real. One of us here showed me the picture of his father. I think it was last week. And I saw the man's legs. 
like half of the leg you could see the bones sorry for painting a graphic picture no flesh it had eaten what happened to the man he was sleeping you know? went to bed at night and all of a sudden someone fired an arrow to the leg he saw it and woke up just a slight pain a slight pain started eating up when i saw the picture it was irritating i said this is your father's leg just imagine dividing my leg by half imagine the toes knees you are seeing the bones that's somebody's leg alive today hiv people who receive their hiv not by a bad living but from dreams are you aware do you know when the enemy rises against you do you have the discernment to know or you just sit down and say we are all like that it's just nigeria you know i've shared with you a, a story I'll, I'll, I'll share it here one time i was praying i think i was in a fast and then i was praying and I, i've shared it here a number of times my the, the ceiling just disappeared like disappeared like that and all of a sudden i saw a big creature big like as tall as this from here up the eyes alone were like the head like my head imagine two of my head that's the eyes and then the tail was like a snake imagine another animal joined to another animal the tail had life of itself it could detach and live its life independently you know how you cut a wall and then the parts are, are, are active that's how it was and then he looked at me with fierce anger and this is what he told me he said so you think you can bring the people of god into abundance that was a conversation red fiery eyes and after that the vision disappeared you think the devil is happy every time you are being transported you think the devil is happy every time you are being delivered you think the devil is happy every time you are being saved being healed you think the devil is happy with this information you are receiving that your life is being changed you think the devil is happy that now you have been taught not to cry at challenges in times of famine you should dance and rejoice you think satan is happy with that mystery so imagine how much he would try to come against me let's do something to this man imagine how he would try to come against koinonia let's do something against koinonia <sighs> who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roar to the lord of lords who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the when you find out that there is a pattern of pain and tragedy i want you to know that hell is about to break its back over you and that is the time to arise before the throne there is the cross and you must know how to fight your way to victory this is where spiritual laziness has cheated many of us this is where the ministry of prayer has been absent in our lives the ministry of engaging the world for victory too much carelessness and people never rise they die at the cross there they die in the grave and there is no resurrection for them hallelujah when everything in your life goes haywire please hear me i understand that here and there one aspect of your life you may be trusting god but when every area of your life is zero if you have been finding out whether it's the devil i answer your prayer now yes he is yes he is i know his signature everything cannot go wrong at once something is wrong somewhere and so it is important you acknowledge it and then you lock your door and find out what is the mystery of deliverance not what is the mystery of prosperity what why am i not getting a job no job no money 
no favor, no open doors, no anointing, no breakthrough, no helpers. You are under attack. Don't wait until it kills you. You finish treating yourself now. Two weeks later, it comes back. I guarantee you, you are under attack. The moment stomach pain is getting healed, your eye starts. As you are taking the last drug for eye, your ear starts. All of a sudden, you hit your leg. You are on your way going to your room. That little hit you for two weeks. There is no balm that cures it. That was not a stone. That was more than a stone. I remember one day I was praying and I was praying for someone, a particular person in this ministry. And then when I was praying, the Lord led me to pray for that person. And immediately I was praying. You know how you blow somebody on your back physically, like I stand behind you and blow. That was what I felt physically when I started praying for the person. Do you know, sincerely speaking, I had to kneel down and lay my hands. The pain was too much. And I knew that person's life was under attack. Ah! I said, My God. You have to arise and help this one. I laid hands there. No praise and worship. Let me tell you this. There are prayers that prevail. There are different kinds of tongues. There are tongues for warfare. It's not the tongues for just edifying your spirit man. You too, you know it will change. Believe me. It's because you don't pray, that's why you will never get there. Just speak anything and even you, you know it didn't rise. The day you lock your door, I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this. You lock your door and say, I'm not going out until there is a change. I'm blasting tongues. The Spirit of God, you will feel your tongues changing. You will know this is warfare prayer. You may not know what you are saying. Your mind is not fruitful. But at the point, your spirit, the anger of your situation is added to your prayer. You are not laughing, praying nonsense. You are thinking of who is calling. No. You are praying because you know that you are breaking through. And at a point, joy. Mm -hmm. One of the signs of the manifestation of the kingdom. Joy comes to you. And for reasons you cannot explain, you know that victory has been wrought. Peace comes to you. He gives you a sign. I tell you, when you get that sign, start dancing. No power. Hear me. This is how I live my life. When I pray. Listen, let me teach you something. Hold on, please. When I pray, I don't stop until that joy comes. I don't do all this. I'm praying for 30 minutes, one hour. If it is in five minutes, the joy comes. That's when I stop. Pray. You hold the universe. You hold every one of us. Listen, there are people here. The moment a man appears in your life, those spirits arise. The lifespan of that relationship, it will not pass two months, no matter how virtuous you are. You thought it was just because you were bad. No! The best people in your family have gone through the same thing. Please listen to what I'm telling you. I'm giving you keys that will give you victory. Evil is real. Hear me? If you see crowds like this gathered inside and outside by the grace of God, brothers and sisters, victory was commanded in the realm of the spirit. It didn't just happen. You sit down there and allow Satan to keep blackmailing what you represent. Every time you want to bless people, people say, don't trust Benga. I'm still suspecting him. Don't you know there are spirits that plant deception? You blast them out in prayer. Someone wants to marry you. All of a sudden, a stranger arises. She does not know she's under the influence of a demon. This lady did A and B and C last year. No, sir. The moment he wants to bless you, he wants to do business with you. And a night before signing the contract, what million somebody calls him and says, Who did I hear you are doing business with? Be careful. You see that? Let me tell you, there are spirits. I told you life is spiritual. You keep watching things happen in your life, you will never rise beyond some levels. There are some of you, the moment you hold money, finances, everything will go haywire till it finishes. When it finishes, everything dies by itself. It's an attack. 
is an attack. There are times some of you have received calls from me, even in the night. You were sleeping and you just had me call you. And I say, Where are you? What are you doing? Oh, Apostle, I'm in this and that and that. All right, let's pray. Some of you have, have received calls. I just call you. I, sometimes I don't even know you. You don't ask how I got your phone number. I just call you and I say, Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, A and B. I see the numbers in dreams. And the Lord says, Call this person. There is an attack over their family. I just call you and off the phone. You don't even know what happened. Some of you, when the devil is about to buffet you, the Lord uses my face in your dreams. Here he comes, shows up. I tell you, if you see me in your dreams, start dancing. I'm not a harpalist. Believe me, it's a mystery. God used the voice of Eli to speak to Samuel. God uses a grace you honor that represents a ranking that can solve your problem. So when he shows up, he shows up with his covenant of possibilities. It's not Joshua Selman. It's the lamb, the lamb himself using the face of his servant. Listen. Don't mind people who preach nonsense around. Say men of God use charm and herbalism to mind. Do it if it's easy to, to make charm. There are men of God I have prayed to command certain miracles in this ministry. And while I went to sleep, certain faces that I respect with respect to the dimension of the desire. Here they come, they walk up. Just like I come to you too. They come and sometimes they just speak a word. Sometimes they lay hands. When you get up, don't just laugh. You get up and receive it. This is where you miss it. You just get up and say, I saw a puzzle. And you are smiling. You missed your miracle. That's the time to dance. Shada Katai. It's done. It's over. It's done. It's over. It's done. It's over. Listen. Before this ministry entered a supernatural dimension of prosperity i remember i was sitting i've been praying and practicing this principle but i knew that it, it's like there was a resistance a resistance and that night i prayed my heart out as i was sleeping all of a sudden i was preaching somewhere in canaan land and bishop oyeriko was sitting down david Piome was sitting down close to him two men i respect their voice when it comes to the aspect of kingdom wealth territorial wealth and they were watching me just like supervising a student on project i was standing on the stage i could not stand very well it was shaking and afterwards i came and oyeriko asked me to empty everything in my pocket on his feet when i dropped it he said no there's still some more i put my hand i dropped everything and he laid hands on me somebody took me to a room i opened the room and i saw dollars i saw pounds i saw naira that was the beginning when that happened koinonia exploded like a charm there are mysteries you don't have spiritual intelligence you will never rise never rise some of you were this close to your breakthrough but you did not know what you saw you thought you had a dream only if you dance for 10 minutes that would have been the end of that problem but you did not know help those under the anointing you are I was praying and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision and then when I was caught up in a vision the second time I would see Papa Adeboe in an encounter not a dream not lying down to dream the first one it was a pastor's conference and then they were serving food in a tray and I was sitting and he pointed me he said come and then I came I saw pastors looking at me with anger and envy and he said sit down here let's eat I said I can never do this I've been trained to respect he said I said sit down and let's eat two of us sat on the ground and we were eating when I got up then January this one happened like 10 years ago January this year when God declared that it's a year of triumph I had that encounter again he finished
finished doing something and then I came to him and I can't remember what happened and then he I, I have the, I have it written down and he looked at me and said okay I'm going to pray for you and he started praying and he was laying hands and he was singing a song in Yoruba quietly just laid hands on me and he was singing a song and then when he finished singing he says now I open up the gates you know how he's just talking I open up the gates of influence to you walk in it and he told me Baba I like you tell somebody in Yoruba go you can go I've opened the road brothers and sisters this is how this is what we call encounters you don't know it how many encounters have you had and you missed it because if it is not perfected in the realm of the spirit the same way you call somebody and shoot an arrow in the spirit and leave him quietly then in the physical two weeks he's still moving alive but he's dead he doesn't even know he's dead you see him and greet him how are you he said in two weeks is my birthday and you laugh at him you killed him two weeks ago yet he's still walking and one day anything can kill him because he's already dead anything that's the same way when you are blessed in the spirit anything can prosper you it's not about what you do it's about something that has entered you already you are something about the operation of witchcraft there are only three ways witchcraft operates i will be teaching you next week and then i will teach you the last point on how to command victory but someone has learned something tonight you have been wasting breakthroughs you finish koinonia and sleep you finish your prayer and sleep and things happen in the realm of the spirit you get up and you don't permit them to happen in this realm don't you know a man must speak for things to manifest You saw your marriage, but you got up and you were shy. You were embarrassed. And you just laughed and said, ah, don't mock me. I'm not talking of all these demonic things where you are moving around. No. Listen, it's not every encounter in the spirit that is demonic. Some things God is telling you, the season has come. Especially when it's, it is emphasized. Two is the number of emphasis. Three is a shorty, is a witness that God has decreed that it should happen. But it never happens. Never happens. Because there is no spiritual intelligence I don't waste opportunities in my life The greatest of my battles are fought in the realm of the spirit The realm of the spirit The realm of the spirit That's what happens You've not commanded victory in the realm of the spirit You are pasting posters everywhere Come for my meeting You are just wasting your money for nothing Believe me The victory Miracle service is always finished before Friday. Koinonia is always finished before Friday. You don't come and finish Koinonia here. It's risky. Risky. You don't come for miracle service and stand on stage and say, it's time to be healed. Foolishness. That's not, it doesn't happen that way. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Then it was possible for him to be slain physically. If he were not slain in the realm of the spirit, he couldn't be, be, be saved physically. It always happens first in the realm of the spirit. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. I, I feel, I feel, I feel the air of some warfare prayers. We, I, I just sense in my spirit that we need to pray some warfare prayers. Listen. In the next five minutes, I know our time is up. But in the next five minutes, I release my faith with you and I want us to pray. We are going to force doors to open. You are not praying to edify your spirit. No. Every pending breakthrough. It has been declared. It's my season of triumph. I have seen it in dreams. The Lord has confirmed it. I should be blessed. I'm not asking. I know it. It is a season. Pray, pray, Koinonia. It's a season of encounter with the anointing. I cannot remain at this level of grace. There is a dimension. I have seen it. He gave me a witness. He gave me a witness. 
not waste the vision. I now understand. I now discern. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the beaters crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken.
a suggestion. It's not a negotiation. You have declared it's my year of trial. I stop bad news. Lift your voice and stop it. Lift your voice and stop it. Tired of bad news. Tired of disappointment. I stop it. I stop it. Have respect, oh God, to the covenant. I stop bad news.
decree and declare every power that closed your means of breakthrough in the name of Jesus I declare tonight let there be a warfare in the heavenlies we deploy angels we deploy angels the angels of God we declare are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to the earth of salvation angels we release you war a good warfare release destinies release lives release favor release breakthrough in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. I decree and declare whoever is behind God's schedule for him, God planned that by now there are some realms of anointing you should have entered, some realms of breakthrough. Anyone behind schedule here, I want to push you by prophecy. So take a path. Pay attention. There is a grace for speed. I decree it. In the name of Jesus, upon everyone here, behind Shadow, in the name of Jesus, I command you, catch up now, catch up now, financially, catch up now, spiritually, catch up now. Anyone called Barry, anyone the devil has vowed that will not marry, anyone the devil has vowed to always have disappointments, I prophesy again, catch up now, catch up now. Listen, I don't know the chains that held your legs, but in the name of Jesus, by the fire that Elijah commanded from heaven, I decree and declare, may those chains break now. May those chains break now. May those chains break now. I pray for you, this night as you sleep, may my God show you a sign. God is a God of signs. God is a God of signs. My God, show your people signs. Signs of their victory. Signs of their breakthrough. This is how to receive your portion. Anything less than this, you are playing games. This is how you receive what belongs to you. The devil will not give it willingly. No. Whoever is here to have at least one solid testimony from January 2017, in spite of the fact that God has declared, you clap for others. Hold on, I'm not just saying maybe a casual, there is no one here who has not seen the faithfulness of God, but I'm saying there is nothing striking. You cannot honestly say from January 1 till today, 10th of March, nothing constructive has happened in your life in the name of Jesus except I be not sent of God in the name of Jesus according to the election of God's mercy and grace I prophesy to you in seven days from today in the name of the Lord God who called me I command breakthrough 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 return with testimonies strange breakthrough Help that lady. Strange breakthroughs. The doors must open. Hear me. Tomorrow, Koinonia will be six by his grace. We are not doing anything online. Leave all those things. Listen. But I want to place a prophecy over tomorrow. Listen. Every time people celebrate birthdays, they reenact what brought the birthday. Correct? 
if a king is celebrating birthday he releases prisoners to prove he's a king i want to place a prophetic word Malatos i'm not speaking to you by faith i'm speaking to you by a covenant by a covenant i'm not asking you whether you believe me or not i'm just asking you to listen to me the lord that appeared to me the one who revealed to me that i saw a generation crying i saw men languishing the one who gave me his presence as a gift and brought the angel of his presence to walk with me i invoke the covenant of my altar that caused kata breast kata i invoke the covenant of my altar oh god arise answer by the covenant i have with you tomorrow 11th march shake the nation change your people in the name of jesus i place my covenant with god upon your life let there be strange results tomorrow strange results tomorrow strange results tomorrow strange results tomorrow, tomorrow. all over tell me all those connected to this grace all those connected to this ministry following online and prophesying from 12 midnight tonight until 12 midnight tomorrow i declare it a day of strange miracles strange encounters strange miracles strange restoration strange impartation an unusual release of angels over Zaria I command it from 12 midnight to say I speak as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ 12 midnight this night I command unusual angelic activities confirming the mandate confirming the mantle Listen Listen This is what I want you to do for me. Please listen. This is what I want you to do for me. From 12 midnight tonight, any time until 12 midnight tomorrow, I want you to pray. Take advantage of this unusual open heavens. I want you to ask whatever it is when you go back. Any long standing case I want you this is not by faith remember this is a covenant it is not i'm not just saying you are trying i'm not asking you whether you believe or not just do what i'm asking you to do use this 24 hours and watch something happen to your life that would never have happened I declare it as the word of the Lord. I place the word of the Lord upon this prophecy. It must happen. To him who sits on the throne and unto the lamb To him who sits on the throne and unto the lamb To him who sits on the throne Listen. No sickness survives tomorrow in anyone's body. You have never seen me hospitalized. You have never seen three put on my hands. You have never seen me fail to come for koinonia because I was down. I declare no sickness dwells in anyone's body tomorrow. Hear me. Whoever will continue to hold your destiny and will not let you go. There is just about two hours. I declare, if they enter tomorrow holding your destiny, I stand and I command the earth to take their body. I say this in the name of Jesus. Anyone who will not let you go, I say it again. If they cross twelve. This night I command the earth to take their bodies.
lift your hands and give him thanks. We're out of time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep standing, everyone. We're out of time. But pay attention. This was worth it. I tell you, you will return with strange breakthroughs. Strange breakthroughs.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Every time in His presence is a time of encounter with wisdom, time of encounter with grace, time of encounter with power. There's no wasted time in His presence. For every time we encounter His Word and we understand it and we obtain grace to apply it, then we walk in the experience of dominion. That reality that has been promised the saints in light. Hallelujah. There are a number of things we've been examining this year that I really want us to pay attention to. God has declared by His Spirit that this is for us a year of triumph, but not just because He said so. Um, I think that many of us are already at the breaking point in our lives. Um, just a push, just a little spiritual intelligence, and people will begin to explode in power, in grace, in wealth, and so for me, I am committed to helping us understand the systems of the kingdom. And, um, oh, by the way, we apologize for the inconsistencies here and there. Let it not distract you. God is still making you, building you, and doing something remarkable in your life. Can you pray a personal prayer for yourself and say, Lord, no distraction. My spirit is glued to you. My ears are open. My mind is prepared to be transformed. You will answer questions. Your words carry spirits. They carry life. So I submit my spirit tonight to receive. This is how we rise in the kingdom. I am here tonight to gain understanding. Give me an advantage. Let your word grant me access. Let your word provide for me tonight an advantage. Please pray. Pray for yourself. Lord, no distraction. What I did not get before I received the grace to get it now. Where I didn't pay attention before I received grace to pay attention. Quicken my heart, grant me understanding. I cry for the spirit of wisdom, understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen and Amen. I believe with all my heart that God is lifting us as individuals by not only imparting upon us grace, not only helping us to become like Him in terms of our conformity, but I believe that He's also helping us to know His ways. And this is how dominion is truly experienced. Dominion, I've always said it, it's not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of these understandings. There are so many laws in the realm of the spirit that are responsible for producing the outcomes of people's lives. And it's important to submit ourselves and meticulously study them. This will be the key. This will be the advantage over our lives and our destinies in Jesus' name. Would walk around three scriptures today before I begin the teaching. Turn your Bible, please, to Second Corinthians chapter four. I want us to just investigate a few scriptures. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Great testimonies. I am very humbled um, hearing the many great things that God is doing in the lives of people. I am more so delighted at the fact that. Many of you are beginning to appreciate the excellency and the power of understanding. And I am very touched seeing how people are returning back and testifying. Not, it's not so much about their Latin, etc. But um, when you walk the word and it produces results for you, then it encourages you to both believe the things you've held on to and seek to know what else you do not know that might be responsible for the next strides in the kingdom that God would desire for you to have and I believe tonight will open our eyes further second Corinthians chapter 4 we're really going to examine some serious things tonight we'll be discussing a number of things I trust by his spirit that God will hand over to us greater 
access points that will give us advantages in this kingdom we rule on the strength of the advantage we have and the advantage we have is tied to our understanding of the systems of the kingdom and this is why the holy spirit is come to help us not only to anoint us empower us but give us intelligence second corinthians chapter 4 are we there verse 18 let's read together whichever your version is let's just read in concert ready one two read while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are what one more time what read on please but the things which are seen are unseen are eternal let's read it one more time if you don't mind one to read while we look not at the things that are seen but at the things which are not seen stop how do you look at what is not seen because the bible says you can look at it it says while we look at the things we look not at the things that are seen but we look at the things that are unseen this is paul the apostle talking who got his revelation directly from jesus christ are we together now the point i'm trying to communicate with this scripture is the fact that paul begins to teach the church in corinth i love paul paul is not only an intelligent person but paul paul is a good mentor he knows how to help men become spiritual paul in this context is helping the believers to be strengthened remember when you read from verse 17 it says for our light affliction that's how that scripture starts which is but for a moment it says walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory then 18 now says that um, um you know we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen why this is he hands over to us a very powerful key that will be helpful in our discussion number one he tells us there are things that are seen and there are things that are unseen then number two he describes the character of those things he says the things that we see are temporal excuse me the word temporal means subject to change another word temporal means not reliable another word temporal means not dependable are we together so let's put it this way the apostle is teaching the church in corinth and this is what he tells them while we do not look at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen in the invisible realm and he tells us why we should take our eyes away he gives us a reason he says for the things that we see he uses an expression temporal but the greek rendition there does not mean subject to change alone it means fake it means it's like a fraud what you see is a is a mirage it will change subject to change paul is opening our eyes to the frailty of the physical realm listen please paul is opening our eyes to the unreliability of the three-dimensional realm he's exposing us to the fact that no matter how solid how real how three-dimensional our physical realities are he's saying that our emphasis and our focus should be on the unseen realm because based on his advantage of understanding the systems of god he says in essence the realm of the spirit is able to superimpose upon that physical realm and to change what we now call a reality into something else second scripture romans chapter 1 verse 20 romans chapter 1 verse 20 blessed be the name of the lord verse 20 Let's read verse 20 together. Ready? One, two, read. For the invisible things uh -huh, of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. How? Being understood by the things that are made. Even in his, his eternal power and Godhead so that we are... 
this is a very interesting scripture it says for the invisible things in other words the physical realm was there to confirm the presence of the invisible realm and to help us it's like a compass that begins our journey into the realm of the spirit are we together now paul is teaching the church in rome that look in your quest to understanding the realm of the spirit you start with the physical realm for the invisible things are we together now invisible things they are a manifestation of something and they reflect themselves in the physical realm very powerful very simple but powerful scripture that controls strange results in the lives of people the invisible things of him from creation are clearly seen being understood by the things which appear so if i look at a physical reality paul is trying to tell me that something created it something made it so and that that physical reality remains a slave to whatever made it happen that when an advantage is sustained in the spirit i can manipulate realities from the spirit that will literally not only change the state of that physical thing are we together now we are examining a few scriptures you will be so blessed tonight i want to teach you something very powerful so paul starts by saying the invisible things they were first invisible and then he says that they are clearly seen being understood not just by head knowledge but we use the physical manifestations to help us explain that there are other realities in the realm of the spirit that are responsible for this formation the last scripture hebrews chapter 11 please verse 3 specifically the b part hebrews chapter 11 the chronicle of men and women of faith hebrews chapter 11 are we together let's read one two read verse three we understand uh -huh, that the worlds were framed by the word of god now the b part this what you're about to read now is my verse of emphasis go ahead and read so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear look at this he's telling us how things manifested through faith he says we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god that's the a part then the b part says so that the things we now see and relate with they did not come from a physical reality they did not come from a physical realm they were not products of things which already appear in other words the things that we see now that frame our reality were locked up in the realm of the spirit and through a technology through a system the physical equivalent of those realities were reproduced in the physical realm are we together now this is i i, I don't know how i i trust god for grace tonight for you to understand this because brothers and sisters this is the key to dominion write a few things down if you can and then we'll begin the teaching um i've said it but just for emphasis number one life and living is entirely spiritual life and living is entirely spiritual that's the first point i want you to write tonight and look at it very carefully life and living is very absolutely entirely spiritual life is not scientific no science is a borrowed system to help us interpret realities science is a system of logic that was borrowed designed by men limited by their understanding too to help us explain realities life is not sociological more than that life in its entirety is spiritual number two the spirit realm always governs the physical realm the spirit realm always underline always always governs 
the, phys- the spirit realm does not only birth the physical realm it governs it understand that realities are not only birthed from the spirit alone they are controlled they are maintained and they are manipulated from the realm of the spirit the spirit realm always governs the physical realm the meaning of that is everything you see that you describe as your physical reality today under certain circumstances can bend to a spiritual reality please listen this is this for me is really good news that i don't have to sit down and helplessly watch my life as though nothing can happen about it have you seen people say honestly there's nothing we can do about it it depends on who is talking and it depends on the spiritual resources within your disposition so if i find out for whatever reason that i am ss the bible says to cheer up why because that thing you call ss is a reflection of a reality it's a message to you that for whatever reason an aberration happened in the realm of the spirit that produced that thing and he's saying under certain circumstances realities can be manipulated in the realm of the spirit to alter what you now call your physical reality this is the advantage that men have not believers men access to the realm of the spirit and the fortitude to manipulate those realities and control the outcome of their physical environment is an advantage god gave men he didn't give believers it's an advantage that's why witches use it that's why wizards use it are we together now they they know when when now you don't have to double into those things but from because this is africa when you look at occultism and the way witchcraft works most of their emphasis is not in the physical state if they want money from your bank account they don't beg you they understand that your will the money and everything around is subject to a higher manipulation so they bring together the resources that are able to manipulate the realm of the spirit to produce the physical effects they want in that case the effect is for you to helplessly submit to whatever their proposals are but they know approaching you physically is a waste of time so they route it through the realm of the spirit and piece together all the materials that they have been taught so they program the realm of the spirit and that programming has an effect on you and you find out that you are responding you carry your whole money and go to build a house in the village and they are laughing at how helpless you are rich but disadvantaged rich but dull of spiritual intelligence are we together there are so many believers bankrupt of what to do because we have not been trained to rise up to a point where we access the tools and the resources that are responsible for supervising the outcome of our lives not being victims of the outcome but supervising that if at any point your outcome does not reflect the word of god you don't cry do you know the reason why we rejoice in the kingdom because there is an advantage there is still a way of routing realities and commanding results in the physical realm without that we are doomed this is where the prophetic becomes powerful in the ministry to the body every time they came to meet the prophet sir we are in trouble and he said ah which trouble your mind is telling you you are in trouble based on the tools i have within my reach it makes no difference whether the people are plenty or few and then he did something to them and they all became blind and he said take them somewhere let them go and eat and go back home an advantage listen your life and destiny is at the mercy of the understanding you have about the spirit realm 
alongside comprehending the tools at your disposal to produce the outcomes you desire it's not just all up to god my life listen and your life my finances my well-being is at the mercy of this understanding and the ability to piece together the tools that have been provided by the word of god to help manipulate realities until my physical outcome is consistent with the word of god it says i will overturn it didn't say i would do it physically i would do it and come and check if it doesn't i'll say no problem i go back again and do it and keep checking when i see it reflect the word of god i leave it that way many believers are products of another man's manipulating the realm of the spirit you have to understand what i'm teaching you so we become victims let me give you an instance this thing we call causes i, I'm, I don't want to spoil your mind but listen come sam if people die young in this family watch this sam is here now and people are dying young god forbid it's just an example in his family are we together and this guy comes and says i will not die young that dying young is a programming listen now the thing with spiritual programming is the programmer can die the code will remain are you are you getting what i'm saying now there are laws the person who did it can die it's like a car once you set it you can die and go and it will continue let me shock you it is the integrity of god himself that supervises the continuity of that process it's not that god is a witch his integrity was programmed in his laws so the factor that keeps those laws working is not satan it is the very integrity of god that's why the laws are reliable so this guy manipulated a spiritual law and cast a spell a projection upon a family while he was doing that sam was in the loins of his father he was not there to ask whether it's my interest or not and sam comes all of a sudden that code catches up with him are we together now and he finds out that people are dying like chickens then he sits down and says talk I hope my life will change if that is your response to it you will die too like it are we together now it will take spiritual intelligence first to understand the secret is not calling a family meeting and say so this is how we are going to die no somebody on behalf of that family must be able to stay with the holy ghost hear me and go back to the realm of the spirit enter that control room and say what happened what factors were invoked together that equal the death of a generation so you route it from there and make things in place and when you come down you announce to your family members is done and the fire ah, is done just like that the invisible things the things that we see the tragedies in our lives brothers and sisters is a network of many spiritual programmings we are victims of it and we don't care and we keep working there are pastors who are anointed but limitations are upon their lives and ministries they will never rise they are tongue talking but barring of a spiritual advantage there are students you go and sit down in class and you are victims of a programming you are writing your exams with your own eyes you are watching yourself go blank you shouted jesus nothing happened you prayed in tongues about nothing happened i want to show you what to do tonight oh i'm happy there is a way out oh you have to believe you don't need to know what it is yet if there is no way out then it means we are doomed let me show you the ancient mystery that made many to break out of many nonsense and arise embargoes 
place upon territories whilst you are from this region this is the limit of how far you can go you can never get to marry a good man it's always stupid men and you just say well my life is like that is what you don't want that will happen someone tonight has to get angry and say let's we have to get to this control room we have to see what is the what is the cause poverty excuse me poverty there are families it's not that they are not valuable the least person in that family is a master's holder yet if it's to be a megad he can be a megad but you want to make him a director something must happen look at the gentleman who shared that testimony that that guy that used to smoke before he got up and saw the other side of himself let me tell you something if that guy was not under a covering that had spiritual intelligence he would have died like a chicken that's how they would have said that's it you know i've seen death many times i've seen the spirit of death ask it it knows me so we're we not just we you see light makes you not to be scared of certain things because the spirit is aware that you have access whenever you say satan is powerful it's not that he has an inherent power satan through experience and longevity has been able to access as many spiritual laws he has pieced them together and he's capitalizing on the unspirituality of men it's not all about grammar this realm is deep and mysterious deep and mysterious people don't just make it it's not just because you quoted scripture no thank you thank you very much it's not just because you quoted scripture oh i will never be poor i'm tithing i'm giving no when the lord declared that we will triumph it is because he's ready to release keys to say look i know where you are coming from and based on the programmings upon your life you should not rise but i want to show you another route job said there is a path which no foul know it the wealth of the lion has not gotten there god always has another system and bail you out let me tell you how you know you are free doors just open all of a sudden within a short time that's how you know something happened in the realm of the spirit not just one door multiple doors all of a sudden you see people just receiving alerts for you now you don't know what it is that happened you just know that different people all related are receiving the same testimony is a key there is a control room for that outcome there is it can become your habitation the bible says he daily loads us where does he get it from that's it there he daily loads us daily once it's 24 hours that law rec recycles someone must find you again to bless you it's a law i pray tonight that you don't take this thing for joke because your destiny depends on it the fierceness that is in the world will require you to have intelligence and don't let people just come and harass you one uncle comes to sit down and makes himself the stumbling block over your destiny he's a joke he's a joke the gate of my destiny already is protected by mysteries not even the compound just the gate for knocking wrongly you pay for it witchcraft nonsense you bring it from where next time don't just say i have dominion i have dominion no no protection this thing you call protection there is a system in the kingdom that protects men some of you are victims of anything if someone plans to throw you down it's only god that will help you because helplessly there's nothing that covers you come on now please i'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and cry for the sake of my destiny this year open my eyes open my eyes someone is praying enough is enough someone is praying 
you have come to the end of your road someone is praying Lord I have to break out of this Never a victim, never a victim, a participant of the outcomes in my life, a participant of the realities of my life, with access to changing them till they conform to the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. This, in my opinion, will be one of the most dreaded teachings that the devil will ever want you to have. Because when you find the key, then you look around. And that's how you see how help. Do you know when I excuse me? When I walk around, listen. When I look at men, come sir, sometimes tears just come down from my eyes. Do you know why? I, I look at men and I pity them. I see how helpless people are. Whatever will happen, except they are under a territory like Koinonia. Do you know many of you, the results you are getting in your life is not because of your understanding. And it looks like that's good, but you need to train yourself to that understanding. Because a day will come, you will be out of this environment. And you will need to sustain intelligence. Human beings get up and just walk like animals. No authority. No dominion. No knowledge. Look at that lady who, sp who spoke about a snake biting her. Do you know for someone else that's death? I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. I started to dance and rejoice because I knew that the outcome of my life was totally dependent on me and God see that's why I don't bother so much about whether people like you or not they say it's your bad luck that is affecting me there's no such thing as that it is your ignorance that allowed somebody's atmosphere to react to yours listen listen in there is a law huh? if I come to your spiritual atmosphere and I find you idle whatever is working in my life is authorized to be working because you are not doing anything are we together now yeah if I carry a course and I come to your life and there is no law that has been raised to counter it you will be a victim of it now this is what sometimes prophets see that they can turn and say your friend wants to kill you what is not that your physical friend wants to kill you is that your friend is carrying an atmosphere what the prophet saw was the law upon his head so sometimes if you are not on if you, if you don't have a spiritual intelligence it's not like the individual got up to kill you the individual came to you with an atmosphere and that atmosphere is reacting to your life like bad luck 
that's why some people erroneously say this woman brought bad luck drive her out of your life are, are you getting the thing now now the truth is that that woman too was innocent but she's a victim of a programming you added ring to the programming you called her your wife and things started going haywire in your life the solution is not to drive her away the solution is to find out that every physical thing you see manifested lack of favor whatever it is is caused by manipulating realities and the key is to find out what it will take to change that do you know in ancient times prophets were dangerous people they were a compendium of mysteries if you saw them just start rejoicing your problem was over they, they literally the bible says men whom the earth was not worthy of they held something and they just watched men when elisha came he said madam what should we do to you in other words just tell me the physical outcome you need we know how to make it happen should i talk to the governor for you say no 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 i live among my own people what should i do and then the hands he said this woman does not have a child he said ah according to the time of life no he didn't say nine months you don't know what he said he didn't say nine months the time of life is not nine months i found out that the law of reproduction that produces is tied to the time of life and he, he just attached that reality to time and says what's this happen madam brothers and sisters when you sustain spiritual intelligence you will be so powerful this is what makes men powerful someone just looks at you and says um over my dead body for you to have a child you go back panicking you really should panic if you don't know what to do about it because if you keep it will happen nobody just speaks out of ignorance especially when somebody is speaking to you from your village don't just make bold face for nothing it won't happen they are speaking on the strength of something they are announcing what they are finished we already tied your womb so in case we plan to keep it secret but since we discovered you were very foolish we just announced it that you will not have a child and you go back and say no god forbid <laughs> you will find out that that womb is truly tied they never came physically but they know that a womb this physical thing you call a womb is only a representation the real womb is in the realm of the spirit and they tied it down put the key in their pocket and said you can go places then you come to a place like koinonia and without prayer there is a covenant that do you know this is why people just come and while prayer is going on some miracles happen the the spirits are see they know the laws that are working all through every koinonia service brothers and sisters from opening prayer to the grace is just a a manipulation of laws displacement of higher spiritual laws contending against others so you just come and find out wow no pain again i used to have that pain but you see sometimes the pain will leave you then when you go out and you're on your way going the pain will return that's a sign that something must happen permanently to you while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen sit down please for the things that are unseen listen the things that are seen are temporal but the things that are unseen is eternal many of us just stand i want money in my bank account just like that just like that in this wicked greedy world just like that i want to get a job jobs are not coming just like that brothers and sisters who thought it was that easy why is it that we're always carrying bad luck in our family why is it that things are not working you know people send me a text and say apostle I've, I've come to the end of it nothing is working of course because there is nothing being engaged nothing is working there are people today the moment finances enters their hand another law kicks in it's like holes 
in the bag everything must finish and then they come back to normal Say in the name of Jesus, I take responsibility for creating the realities in my life. Say it convincingly in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that I will not allow circumstances to just happen in my life. I will both dictate them and manipulate them to my advantage. Listen, brothers, look at me. Say this word, establishment. Say it again. That's what most guys are looking at now. Do you know establishment is a deep mystery? I want to buy a car. I want to have a house. I want to have cash flow. And all you do is you just sit down and keep shaking your head. And say, I know one day go better is a joke. Is a big joke in this Nigeria where you hardly help see anybody arise to help you you go to your uncle and say uncle to, I'm of age and I said you are very stupid for even coming to tell me you are of age who helped me when I was your age and they leave you there do you think helpers just arise like that no they are called my life will never be left to chance my life will never be left to if god wants it no i am absolutely responsible for producing the outcomes of my life for producing the outcomes of this great ministry and everything you see is a product of an operation of spiritual laws many of you will come to thank god for your results but will no longer be surprised by it because you have sustained mastery over producing it do you understand the lady said she got six alerts you've not seen anything yet the six alerts is status what is what is six alerts no it is a realm you can live in it's a realm you can live in the bible says that city every tree delivers its fruit in its month so there is a, a tree allocated for every month while one is resting another one is starting his own that's a reality that can happen to someone what of the anointing what of membership there are pastors who want membership they criticize it they abuse it and they think it's just by publicity I've told, I've told you again and again you will you will print and print and be tired this that's not how it works there is a mystery men are not idiots they don't get up and leave their homes climb bike trek and come and stand there are people standing outside you see them near the wall they are not stupid people it's not just because you are anointed being anointed is not enough to bring people no sir no sir I gave us an example one of the weeks watch this let's call this let's call this an anointing let's call this a law activated this is Sam now Sam wants to be a successful young man Sam wants to be an anointed person and then for instance he came from a background where that possibility does not exist and all of a sudden through the operation of the anointing something comes upon the life of sam watch this call this thing a mantle or a mandate now sam is moving around something has been activated are you seeing that now this is the reason why creation will respond to sam in a strange way this thing you see that is on him is a language it can mean bless him it can mean curse him it can mean honor it can mean bad luck now watch this so let's assume this thing came projected from the village hold it sam he doesn't know he's carrying something on his life promise come quickly 
Now they all come and meet in Zaria and promises with Sam. Watch this. Two of you come. You see, they don't know what they are all carrying. But I'm about to react to them based on what they are carrying. I come and I bless promise. And I leave Sam. I don't even know why. A programming is compelling my physical reaction to Sam. You call it bad luck. Are we together now? And something happens. He goes back again. And then two weeks, he finds out that he fights with this guy. And they have to part ways. He doesn't know why. He goes back and cries. But he's crying and this thing is still in his life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, Sam gets up and goes somewhere else again. And this thing is speaking. Somebody was about to give him a job. And while the man was sleeping in the night, this thing caused the man to have a dream. And in that dream, he saw Sam making his company fall. And he wouldn't tell anybody. Sam does not know that this thing is working against him. Are we together? He gets up in the morning and comes. I'm ready for the job. And the man says, look, young man, for whatever reason, I cannot give you this job. And he says, what did I do, sir? This is the journey of many people's lives. This is how many of our parents are. They've been carrying something for 50 years that is responsible for the pain in their lives. They've been carrying something for decades. Born again, but still carrying it. Some of you came to ABU with this. You did very well. But the programming was supposed to work when you come to university, not secondary school. That's why you still got all your A's. As soon as you got admission, this programming starts. There are some, the programming starts at 23, at 25. Once you are under that age, it will not work. You will just be looking at your elder ones and you will be pitying them. Hiya. Why are these ladies with bad luck like this? They will say you are the luckiest one. Keep growing. The day you celebrate your 25th birthday, a stranger comes in your dream and says, just like I was with your sisters, now my attention has come. The programmer is dead, but the programming is still at work. Hear what I'm telling you and rise free and reign as if Satan does not exist. He goes to Ejimi. Ejimi, please, can you bless me? Ejimi wants to bless him but this thing is talking to him and he says do you know what I will help you have you seen people who have what it takes to help you and you wonder why they just cannot help you you and someone will come to beg you are begging for 20,000 the other guy is begging for 300,000 they count it and give him your present he says case is a special case no sir what is on you many believers don't know this the moment they want to throw people from their job this thing starts speaking and it's your father that they came and drove away and he went bad luck woes tragic events there are others you rise to a level you will rise but when you get to a level it's like a it's like a programmed limitation the moment you get there something must happen mysteriously you will crash back right to where you started from so every time you are rising nobody stops you because they know it's a waste of time your work done will be zero after 20 years of working the moment you just finish your house one small rain will come and you come and see your house as if they use tractor is that a rain level your house just like that have you not seen people Two days to dedicating their house, fire catches the house and burns. You will know that this fire was supervised by somebody. This fire is not just atmospheric reaction. No. There is a programming upon men. The moment they are 40 years, 45 years, an average man in Africa, the moment he gets to 50, certain sicknesses start coming. If you are less than 50, it will leave you. The moment you hit 50, all of a sudden your legs cannot move again. They call it rheumatoid arthritis. Say, ah, but you have tried. Heart condition starts. Prostrate cancer starts. 
So most people are already ready for it. The moment your clock is ticking 45, 46, you're already shaking. All my father's brothers are dead. None of them, none of them died innocently in a sound sleep. They were perfected by diseases and yokes till they died. Is God speaking to someone? I'm showing you the reason behind the wickedness and the things that are happening in our lives. And please, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. Because whether or not you care, it will soon catch up with you. By default, every African I know has something tragic on his head. By default. When our grandfathers were dancing to masquerades, are we together? When they were dancing to masquerades, they didn't know what they were doing. They were just dancing around. And your own grandfather was a person playing drums. He was rolling and playing the drums. I agree with this covenant. You were in the loins. Now, you may say it does not matter. Don't let ignorant people fool you. I have met Jesus Christ. I've read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Are we together? programmings that destroy the destinies of men. I pray for too many people and they never rise. And you ask why. I'll never forget some years ago a pastor came in from Kaduna. Nothing was working in his life. Ministry grounded. Whatever it is, everything went bad. And all of a sudden, when he came to me, you know, he was doing all these arrogant things that pastors do. Look, I'm okay. I was seeing a demon standing behind him. You know how a shadow is. That's what I was seeing. And I was telling him, I was taking it easy just because I was not telling him what I was seeing. I said, please take it easy. No, 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 no. I don't believe this. I can't be caught. I, I said, sir, sorry. I'm just trying to explain. Yeah, no, 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 no. Do you know, he got up like 15 minutes later, spat all kinds of things, dirty my carpet, and I, just, I was just looking at him. I'm beating his foolishness. There are some of you, you are physically supposed to be responsible for the priesthoods of your area. You may not know. They've told you. You have to be a priest unto God or go back. Go back to the other side. But to be neutral is a joke. See, sisters, there are some of you marrying a man of God is God's design to bail you out. It's not so much about God wanting you to do ministry. God looked at your life and destiny and said, Kai, I have to attach you to a grace that I know is able to bail your family out. Believe what I'm telling you. This our God is a wise God. He knows how to release his help. I remember a lady who they were getting, they were going to get married. And they gave her something. She said they gave her true story. Something like a black ring. And to me, she said the ring disappeared. Physically. I'm holding something and it leaves my hand. That ring disappeared. Do you know why? Because the marriage has happened. Not to the husband. The real husband has been married. Now, this other guy will wear necktie. And dance around like a fool on the wedding day. And come. And find out that there are three people lying down on that bed. You will know there are three people. You want to touch his wife and hear a slap. Pa! Listen, don't laugh. And you are asking why. And the husband is saying, I paid dowry. You don't pay dowry on a woman twice. So, before you get pregnant, he has slept with her. She has had her own pregnancy. You call it fibroid. But the demon has already put his own seed. And so your own cannot work. Are we together? You keep trying and nothing happens. And the spirit is saying you are, you are a, 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 it's a joke. And people say, don't worry, it's all right. Fibro is something. How old are you? Did you marry when you were 31? Okay, it's all those biological things. Listen to what I'm telling you. And rise out of this disaster. Some of you are already feeling strange pains around your body. It's time to shake that nonsense out. And say, no way. Satan, let me inform you. If it's what you brought on my sister, you are bringing on me, I will crush your head to pieces. No. Crush you to pieces. 
Bible says the God of peace will soon cross Satan. How many people you see patterns in their family? They will do introduction. Two weeks or three weeks to the marriage, the guy will run away. Have you seen that happen to people? Run away physically. A responsible person. We are not talking of a smoker. You went to see the uncles. You did everything. Paid dowry. Did everything. Just for you to plan the wedding. The guy will now get up and run away. You will see him on the street walking like an idiot. Oh God, what happened? He has become mad. By the time two or three men see that that happened to you, the men won't come. Let me tell you, brothers are not stupid. Before they come to a lady, now, brothers are smart. They will ask and say, sorry, the, the way you are looking at this thing, do you plot this graph? Is it, is it headed our way? Otherwise, they will just draw back. That's what makes a lot of ladies look like they carry bad luck. I'm saying this thing because we are going to pray this night. Oh, some chains must fall off your head. No, if I was not part of the programming, I will not be a victim of the manifestation. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Someone cannot sit down somewhere with wickedness and program something, and my life becomes a victim of it. And in case someone has programmed something, some people are about to pay this night. Let me tell you. I believe in vengeance. So, let me tell you if you don't like it, just leave that one to me. Receive the one that is for you. But I'm telling you, the Bible says to declare the day of vengeance. Vengeance of our God. Many of us are too casual with our lives. That's why nothing opens. These spirits hate you, they will kill you if they have room to. So make no mistakes and think we are just in a nice, very social western world. No. There is a warfare going on in this world. You must sustain intelligence. Are we together? Failure. I don't think people are so unserious. It's just that these programmings destroy people. Look how long it takes for an average man to be established. An average godly man. Some brothers right now, as you are seated looking at me, you are almost hopeless about your life. You don't even know, where do I stand from? Will I ever be able to rent a house? Because every door is closed. And the devil is deceiving you to say it does not matter. It does. There are families who have patterns where children are the ones who feed the parents forever. Have you seen that? Some of you come from that family. You too, you know there's no inheritance for you. Dead or alive, it doesn't make any difference as far as your breakthrough is concerned. Because there is absolutely nothing left for you. As you are, 100 level, you are fending for yourself. You even have to look for something and send back home. And they will tell you that's how it happened to us too. Some of you cannot sleep in the night because of all kinds of terror of darkness. But I'm particular tonight about this yoke that brings bad luck. You know this thing they call bad luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bad luck is real. Look at me. Look at me. If you dare laugh at what I'm telling you, you will pay for it, I tell you. Bad luck is very real. Bad luck. A negative atmosphere. Driving away every potential for your lifting. You never rise. I have walked in it, so I know it exists. And I've walked in favor too. Some of you have never seen favor in your life. I know you say I'm favored, but you have not seen it. It's a lie. Because there was no programming that is responsible for it. Have you seen people who have been in this area? Their trouble started maybe from 1996 till now. Their whole life has not changed. They will tell you it's because A and B happened. Excuse me, please. 
some of our parents when they didn't get certain jobs they remain like that till today till tomorrow no open door I prayed for a couple was it last week they started building a house and all of a sudden they had a dream the same dream two of them and somebody spoke to them and said that money they are going to divert it to treat their body from that day they could not continue that house again either the leg refuses to rise or the eye is swollen or the head has a problem or there's a surgery they have to find out they, they will operate the person and forget something in his stomach Abba! operate you and forget scissors forget knife is the doctor so dull it's not only two people that were operating you while they were operating a, a programming was there pushing scissors to your stomach there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain listen you had the testimony of that brother I know many of you did not understand what he was saying that he got up and saw a vision of the dead himself do you know what that means they finished seeing him in the realm of the spirit over that guy is not supposed to be alive now that's how many people are they are walking corpses they are moving but someone has already put full stop who shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not declared it the first key to manipulating realities from the realm of the spirit is strategic prophetic prayers write it down oh prayer is a mystery many of you will start praying today like never before it's not all about just spiritual growth when you pray you are programming when you pray you are you are arranging a series of events to happen in your physical world prayer james 5 16 the fervent heartfelt effectual prayer of the righteous man amplified said is dynamic in its working dynamic in its working listen every time you are praying in the realm of the spirit especially if that prayer was initiated by the spirit of god himself not just by your normal prayer time the bible says when you start praying the holy ghost searches the mind of god he finds out what is god's will for you he knows what law that must be put in place to see that outcome your own job is just to pray so you get up and all of a sudden there is an urge to pray and the holy ghost searches the mind of god and finds out that your helper is about to come but that altar wants to arise as usual and all of a sudden you rise up and start programming your prayer will soon collide with somebody and a spirit is coming he's still coming as soon as he comes like a ballistic missile no one ever resisted him he will always come and destroy men but this time around while he was coming he met a man with intelligence he met an altar being raised in the place of prayer let them laugh at you you are creating your realities you are creating your realities help them please let them laugh at you you are programming your realities listen listen let me tell you something huh? the kind of deliverance that will happen here tonight i know there's miracle service next week we can't wait someone's destiny must be released this night pay attention
attention to what I'm telling you. There are lives that will never rise till some things are in place. Don't, don't, please, don't let people deceive you. This is your destiny. Prayer. 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 One mystery that helps you reprogram realities. Number two. Write it down. The second mystery that reprograms your reality is the mystery of sacrifice. Write it down. Sacrifice. Psalm 50 verse 5. Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant by sacrifice. I give the chains on Listen. Listen. I use sacrifice to break out of certain cycles in my life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is what men of God are supposed to teach very well. People, it took sacrifice to put your family in that captivity. Let me tell you sincerely, under the God of heaven, it will take sacrifice to bring you out. There is a kind of sacrifice. The Bible says, David, Solomon, took a thousand bond offering slaughtered them and was spilling blood what was he changing he did something and god came in the night and said you called me you called me oh i have to come you called me solomon what should happen sacrifice is an incense that arises in the realm of the spirit i'm talking of what will cost you not all this no, please i'm not asking you to give me money but I am showing you how people have come out of strange situations. There was a king in the Bible. The Bible says the nation of Israel came to capture them. It was obvious they were going to kill him. He carried his firstborn son and slew him. The Bible says an indignation rose to heaven. They could no longer fight. You are seeing your victim. You can't kill him. Sacrifice. There are many believers... There, the money God gave you now is not your prosperity. It's for your bailout. Your prosperity has not yet come. What God gave you is supposed to bring you out of trouble. You kept it and you are buying jeans. Frying your hair and buying this. Whereas you should be bailing your life out. Let me tell you something. I saw certain things happen in my family. Financially. I said this thing will not happen in my life. I cannot begin to tell you what sacrifices that open the heavens even over this ministry you are seeing koinonia enjoying open heavens recession or not you are enjoying it. it's not just like that there are mysteries being engaged that open the heavens if you are unwilling to sacrifice to part with something in order to reprogram a reality in the realm of the spirit get set to suffer i'm not necessarily talking of finances sacrifice it can be a sacrifice of praise not just a sacrifice of money i told you the other day that the lord told me to dance like a madman for two hours try it and think it's easy i'm not a dancer be jumping foolishly for two hours is not called a celebration of praise a sacrifice you are crying but you are still dancing that's all god will ask you to do and reprogram something are you hearing what i'm saying now there are some of you god will wake you and just say sing and dance no sleep night vigil your night vigil is a night vigil of praise and dance you are too big to dance you are too big to pray so you are too big to come out of that course the yoke will sit down on your head and keep disgracing you there are some of us is the sacrifice of honor the sacrifice of honor listen let me tell you why stealing money in the house of god is very bad if you've never known let me tell you this watch this you saw that a lady came and dropped some amount here i'm not saying you should drop money but let me teach you something if i carry a seed for instance and i give a man of god i didn't give him money 
I carried my trouble and I gave his covenant. Listen, let me tell you how people carry trouble. God, that man has entered a covenant with God that has surmounted certain levels of trouble. When you carry your seed, your seed is a tray. The trouble is what is on it. That's the part you don't see. Thief, hear me. Those who are stealing money in the house of God, not going on here, all these people who work in finance departments that loot money and just put it and run away, they don't know what they are doing. You look at this, you call it 1,000. No, this is an expectation of someone. Is that not what was on the gift of Naaman that he brought? Gehazi didn't see it. Gehazi stole it and he said, Ah, ah. Gehazi, you have carried leprosy. The leprosy left Naaman, but he was still there. That you don't see it does not mean it's not there. This is something many people don't know. So when you see somebody cook a nice food for a man of God, think out what are they doing? People are carrying their sorrow. And they land it and say, Lord, as this man is eating my food, whatever covenant build him out, see, it's called sacrifice. When it was time for Isaac to bless his sons, he said, make me uh, 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 venison. You think he was hungry? He was activating a law. Was his wife not there? You, a male, make me venison. My soul needs to be gladdened. I want to release something on you. You see that? The same way, if I give you 1,000 Naira, you will only be foolish to think I just gave you 1,000. I didn't give you 1,000. I gave you a possibility. Many people have collected money from anointed men and their lives did not change. I'm not saying you worship it. There are people who sometimes they come and I just remove 1,000 naira I put and they say, no, I won't collect. And I say, these people don't even know what they are doing. I'm not giving you 1,000. What can 1,000 do? I'm priming a reality for you. I'm transferring something to you that if you carry with understanding will change your life. But all we do is we don't receive the blessings. We think the blessing is the money. Then you go and give somebody in his shop and say, give me yam. You are eating 100 naira yam and you come back two weeks and find out that person's shop has changed. He doesn't even know what happened. He just knows he got money that day. He got more than money. This is how people rise in the kingdom. Some can't explain it. They just know they met somebody. They don't know what they met. Other people, their trouble started because they met somebody. Somebody laid hands on you and your destiny disappeared. Laid hands on you, took your wisdom, took your glory, took your grace, took everything and left you with shame. I prayed for, there is a gentleman, I think he will come one of these days, he may even be listening to me. The guy said there were people who were involved, they were involved in all these gay things so that they would give him money for school. And I told him, I said, there is no stupid man who sleeps with another man and says it's for nothing. Whether he knows why or not, the Lord does not care. It's a system. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Whether the, the boy is getting his school fees from it. But he doesn't know what else they are taking. Satan is not stupid. He's a smart businessman. If Satan gives you 100 naira, he took 1 million. I assure you. Do you see that it is when these obstacles give way, then your life will start rising. Your life does not just rise like that. Look at our parents. They went to school. They were women leaders, fellowship leaders. Their lives didn't change. Will you continue like this? Or will you insist? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. The moment God places a need, sacrifice in your heart. Brothers and sisters, don't sit down frowning as if God is taking from you. No. You're tithing. That's why I encourage people to tithe. Most people think pastors are playing. Let me show you something. We are going to pray. Hebrews 7, please. We'll read from verse 7 downwards. Let me show you something that happens when you tithe. Oh, I wish it could be projected, but if, if it cannot, that's all right. Hebrews, Hebrews what? 7. Fine. Watch this. 
and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better we're reading on verse 8 here it says and here men that die did what receives tithe but there received them of whom he witnessed that he lives watch this so you are here giving tithe and the bible is saying in the realm of the spirit something is being hap is happening too you are doing something physically here but there another thing is happening too you are giving tight and the bible is saying you are bringing it to jesus your high priest your melchizedek and he's bailing you out of something but the devil told you to eat it you carried it and you ate spaghetti with it and you you ate away your next level and you thought it doesn't matter are you seeing how disobedience has landed many of us in hot water sacrifice i will give you the third one and we'll pray seriously there are people here i believe in my heart that throughout this week god is going to give instructions that this praise and dance instruction is still going to come to people low. there are people who are still going to hear it psalm 149 let the high praise of god be in their mouth and a double edged sword in their hands you are about to use dance to remove the head of somebody a lady used dance if she came physically to fight but she danced before a king and the king said what do you want and she went to herodias say remove the head of this man a prophet notwithstanding his head still went it's a principle brothers and sisters when you are dancing and moving your body before god you think you are dancing before him no you are doing something to your destiny this kind of dance is not the one you look at yourself it's the one you sweat like a fool that's why you do it in secret because it's too ugly the presence of people will make you feel uncomfortable it's not all these organized things you are no you are locking yourself lord I am dancing unto my king the warrior the captain the one who is reprogramming things and you are singing praises and dancing and while you are dancing visions of the pain of your family are coming to you and you are dancing and god is saying it's me you are dancing to let me arise as a god of vengeance brothers and sisters there is a dimension of god i have seen it's called vengeance you see me tell you this thing God can avenge men. Luke 18 verse 1. Then what? Avenge me my adversary. They have cheated me because I didn't know the laws. Avenge them. He said the man neither feared God nor men. But because of the importunity, the woman forced him. He avenged her. Avenge me the level of prosperity I should have entered. But you kept me down. Avenge me five children I should have had. But now I've had only one. Because you were barren for eight years. Before one came with pain. God the avenger of men. Provoked through the operation of kingdom principles. The third key. That changes. Situations. Is prophecy. Write it down prophecy is powerful when done properly prophecy prophecy they are taking for a prey and none say yet restore none say yet this is one of the benefits of coming to the house of god listen let me tell you if the devil robs you of the house of god he has cheated you please hear me those inside and outside you are not doing god a favor when you come to his house you are coming to a platform where prophecy can be available to intercept with something in your life for three days they didn't find a donkey they said there is a holy man of god let's go to him when they went to him he said rise up and i will come and tell you what is in your heart he said the donkey you have been looking for Watch how prophecy changes things. You have been looking for it. I place a prophetic word on it. It has been found. Number two, 
on your way back you are going to see two men three men carrying bread two of them will salute you and give you the bread three you will go to a garrison of the philistines and the hand of god will come upon you let it be that when these three signs happen you will do as occasion serves you for god is with you in other words levels have changed something has happened You see people who tell you they went and something didn't happen. They, then they came for one koinonia service. Then they went back. You never go back after any service the same. I'm opening your eyes, you see. Just like today now, you are going to live with something. It's just that you are not paying attention to how your environment starts treating you. Are we together? Sister, it is the will of God for you to triumph this year my brothers hear me it is the will of god for you to triumph this year and any force that wants to remain and keep you must give way it must give way you are not negotiating it must give way i told you that i have sensed this in my spirit that there are people here who are at the edge of the next level just a little guidance prophetic guidance like i'm doing and it will break out of some levels that even your loved ones will call you and say come i know you are serving god but i don't what is the meaning of this thing what are you doing what is it that you are doing then you will know that god did not lie when he said it is your year of triumph then you will give him thanks he said thanks be to god you are asking god for a job whereas he wants to open a gate for you a gate a gate a gate brothers and sisters not a job a gate not a job you are asking god for marriage whereas he wants to open your destiny marriage is too small these three things are available here this night the grace to pray and reprogram yourself sacrifice and then a prophetic word it took one man for sin to come to the world it took one man for negativism to be programmed in your life it will take a prophetic word but you see not just every prophecy every man speaks according to the measure of grace available it says whatever we do we should do according to the measure of grace so if i do not have the grace to set you free i can pray it but it will not happen it's not that i'm not anointed the grace is not enough whenever i am praying for people you see me pray i tell you that i'm not praying to you just for my faith that okay i prayed the word level no we use another mystery to assure the result it's called your covenant my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you my praise is calling you oh take my praise take my praise calling you let me tell you a little story hold on you see this thing i'm wearing i went for a meeting in lagos and a particular gentleman who is a fashion designer trusting god for a new level he just saw me and measured me like that on the stage and went back with his wife and sold it in 24 hours requested from the pastor that they would see me he came with his wife and said man of god we made you a cloth and i was just laughing i said this guy's life will change like day and night brothers and sisters i'm not lying if they reach one week somebody gave him three million nothing happens by itself everything is provoked you do nothing you get nothing hear me have that guy you do nothing you get nothing period is as simple as that you do nothing you get nothing you sit down and watch life you don't get anything from it anointing will not just come to your life just because you think you are around koinonia breakthrough will not just come it is provoked we are going to do these three things this night i want you in the next five to ten minutes 
you are going to blast in tongues until every spiritual roof over your life gives way. Lift your voice and pray.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Listen, say after me in the name of Jesus. I speak to spirits, I speak to covenants, I speak to altars holding my life holding my destiny by the covenant of the blood release my destiny now lift your voice and pray Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Every physical reality reoccurring in my life that I do not like. Whatever programmed you in the realm of the spirit, I cancel that programming now. Lift your voice and pray. I tell you fire is burning in this place say in the name of Jesus I declare that any element of the supernatural that has been hijacked by darkness and is being manipulated against my destiny I come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I destroy you now Lift your voice and pray. So back up, back up, back up, back up. In the name of Jesus, let it, let it, let it go. to minister to you i tell you if i if god shows you what i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit and the way doors are opening up when you force it it will open help those under the anointing you see people getting their deliverances strange miracles being released hallelujah say in the name of jesus any spiritual and human agent who is in partnership with any spiritual law to fight me this night I release judgment on you lift your voice and pray I command judgment I command judgment I command judgment I provoke judgment I command judgment I invoke judgment upon anyone in partnership in satanity with the powers of the heaven to walk against my life I provoke judgment may the God of vengeance arise tonight 
name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. All earth, hear the word of the Lord. All winds, hear the word of the Lord. I decree, I declare to every element of the supernatural, bring my breakthrough, bring my blessings, bring my favor, bring your voice and begin to pray. I speak to the earth. The prophet said, for out of it comes bread. I provoke my portion. I provoke my portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I speak to my helpers. Hear what I'm saying and pray it with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. I speak to my helpers. Every law stopping you from coming to my help I release you now manifest in my destiny lift your voice and pray I release you every helper over koinonia every helper over my destiny every helper over your destiny I release them Let's pray one last prayer point and then I'll begin to prophesy over your life. Say in the name of Jesus, covenants associated with my family, every altar associated with the pain of my family. Tonight, as an ambassador, I stand on behalf of my loved ones and I cancel those ordinances lift your voice cancel it ordinances of death ordinances of bad luck Jesus, 
everyone here who is represented in the vision that I've seen. Let your destiny open now. I command deliverance. Deliverance to your destiny. I open it. I open it. I open it now. I open it now. Inside, outside, online, I open it now. The yoke of bad luck, repeated cycles of misfortune over anyone here. You may not know it, hear me, but if there is anyone carrying a negative yoke that is commanding everything around you to be negative. I see fire coming on a few people. It's a massive deliverance that will happen now. At the count of three, may the fire from the throne room locate such a one and burn up those shafts right now. One, two, three, right now, right now, right now. Shokoto Sabada. Inside, outside, the fire from the throne is falling on destinies. Falling on destinies. Bad luck. Misfortune. Bad luck. Misfortune. It must come to an end. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat this after me and then just be silent. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, visit negative patterns, repeated patterns in my life now. Just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. That's the instruction. Just keep quiet and watch what happens now. Thank you, Jesus. Everywhere, Lord, inside and outside, break patterns, break patterns, break patterns, break patterns, repeated patterns, repeated patterns. My God, my God, I, I see, I see, I know this is the vengeance of God. Patterns you may not know, but you are under an atmosphere and an unction that is about to change your life. Break patterns, break patterns, oh God. Hallelujah. God wants to use you. The Lord wants to deliver fathers, not mothers, fathers, but He wants to use you here. The Lord is showing me there are at least between 31 to 41 people, fathers right now, with negative things on their head. God is going to use you as a point of contact. Lord, let your power move to those ones. 41. I place that word in the realm of the spirit now. In the name of Jesus. I place that word. In the name of Jesus. If it comes upon you, there's something in your family. If it, once it comes on you, just know there's something in your family. If you have never known it, know it now. If that fire lands on your head, there is something in your family that is giving way. No, you can't escape it. Except it's not on your parents. If it is on them, it must be visited now. The vengeance of the God of Israel. Inside, outside. Inside, outside. That sword of vengeance. There is a sister here. The fire of restoration is landing on you now. There is a sister. It's coming from heaven. Strong restoration. 
of your spiritual life strong restoration of the operation of favor in your life whatever happened to it is over it's coming afresh now coming afresh now coming afresh now every negative voice that speaks to your spirit and misleads you making you believe it is the spirit of god i challenge right now every antichrist voice masquerading as the voice of the spirit giving you instructions every negative voice masquerading as the holy ghost speaking to you giving you instructions that are activating wrong laws in your life i command judgment on those spirits now hallelujah just be patient with me we are rounding up I, I tell you the liberty the liberty that i see in the realm of the spirit even me i'm satisfied i'm satisfied with what i'm seeing satisfied with what i'm seeing very very strange breakthroughs what is left for you now is to await the physical manifestation remember i told you it's always in the realm of the spirit you just thought you fell no keep watching you will soon see dimensions of breakthrough that even you you will not be able to account for some of you will start make sure you testify many of you from tomorrow you will hear your loved ones even things they didn't discuss with you they don't know what happened but you know what happened to them I prophesy over your life carry favor carry favor from the realm of the spirit let there be a release of favor passing through the hands of men into your life in the name of Jesus hear me I've not prayed for students writing exams people have been sending me text messages I'm not happy with let's change some things now every mistake you have made in your exams that is reflective of your humanity that is reflective of your carelessness from the realm of the spirit we correct it now from the realm of the spirit we correct it now anyone here who has been going blank in the exam hall i command that blinding spirit i command it to leave your mind now hear me from tonight may you have dreams and see your questions i release it to you in the name of jesus advance revelations by the spirit over your most difficult exams you will see them before you write them in the name of jesus christ anyone here who has not testified and has clapped for others while they testify i give you now till miracle service as surely as the god of heaven lives by friday as surely as god lives return with a strange testimony believe me return with a strange testimony whatever has refused to work in your life i force it now to start working hear me whoever has despised you 
because of something on you that kept making people despise you i place something else on you and i command that shame and reproach be rolled away from your life one more time i place something on you it's an unction it's a grace and with it i roll away shame and reproach in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Yes, a little instruction for us. Don't miss miracle service. From now till Friday, please make sure you take at least, even if it is 10 to 15 minutes every day, praise and rejoice and dance before God. Do this thing I'm telling you. Just do it. Be obedient people don't be foolish you don't have to be the one to sing go and get uh, um, get whatever it is and you don't have to dance in the presence of people around if your room is not convenient find one bush somewhere stroll around prayer department on Tuesday take out some time even if it's 30 minutes you people should dance before God huh Dance on behalf of the house for miracle service before God. Rejoice as if you are out of your mind before God. This is what I want you to do. Please, listen. I want you, if you can, to write your prayer request. All I want you to do every day is place it on the ground and dance your life before it. Please, Koinonia, I can kneel down and beg you. I love you and I want you to experience results. I will not tell you what I'm not doing. Write it down. You can write it this night. No job. No marriage. Bad luck. No breakthrough. For your loved ones who are spiritually sensitive and they will not laugh at you. Tell them this is an instruction. They should do it. If both of you, if two or three of you are believers and you love God and you believe in yourselves, you can do it together. Anyone that is doing big man is in here. I tell you, that's the person who will never see any results. All this big man is in, big man is in, is why people don't get results. Are we together? Dance before him. If you can do it in the night, that's a best time for you. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or as the Holy Ghost instructs you. Dance before him. Do you know what you are doing? You are mocking Satan. You are literally, literally mocking the devil. The Bible says in Psalm 2 that the Almighty will sit on his throne and laugh first. After that, he will now execute vengeance. You are dancing. Forget about the problem. Remember we just read that whatever we see can change. So write it down. SS, write it down. If you're, let your aunties participate. No pregnancy, write it down. I finished school 10 years ago, no job. Don't start saying, Lord, see my genius, have job. That, that's a stupid thinking. Don't let that spirit of bitterness come. Let me give you a little precaution. This prophecy has been declared in the open now. Satan will orchestrate people to annoy you. Hear me. Hear what I'm telling you. The devil will orchestrate people to annoy you. Some of you, as you are going back now, you will see things that will kill your joy. Some of you is in your home, right in your home. Your husband, your wife, your children, even yourself. Some of you will hear a foolish report. Just know that's the devil trying to rob you of what must manifest this week. We are agreeing with God. The moment a thing provokes your spirit, just laugh it away. Laugh it away. I know it's painful, but laugh it away. You can be crying in your spirit, but don't let the devil see your tears this week. This week is a week of joy. Provoke yourself. Somebody calls you and says, it will not work. Just like you said, that rent, we, I thought you prophesied that it will happen this week. The rent is no longer coming. Don't worry. Laugh. They call you at your job place and somebody wants to come and harass you and make nonsense and rubbish. Don't worry. Laugh. Enter your room. Lock your door. And, and laugh at the devil like a fool. I mean laugh literally. And dance before God. Dance before God. 
celebrate him and dance before God. You may be sweating. I know there is heat. But dance before God. Let the sweat keep coming. After, Don't prophesy. Don't do anything. Just dance before God. Next day, carry your request again. Dance before God. On Tuesday, prayer department, after you pray, take out time. Dance on behalf of the house. Let's see the power that will stop you from triumphing this week. This third month, it will not finish so before you have your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. We wave it to you. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are the one who has given us access to light. You said the kingdom is for little children. We are doing things that look very childish. We are doing things that look very stupid, very immature. But Lord, in this foolishness, you have hidden the wisdom of God. In this supposed ego stinking activities, you are producing dimensions of glory that will cause the ears of men to tingle. Please put your hands down. Now you are here. Our time is gone. Keep standing, everyone. You are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please hear me. Inside, outside. These realities that we release by the Spirit are meant for Christians. Born again, serious believers. In case you are here this night and you are saying, Man of God, my ways are not right with God. I have never truly made a genuine decision for Him. Or you are saying, please let me have your attention. You are saying, man of God, at one point, I made a decision for Jesus, but as it stands right now, I'm not right with God. Can you pray for me? Yes, I want to pray for you. Wherever you are, inside, first overflow, second across the road, and online, wherever you are, make your way right now. I want to pray with you. We have one minute for this. Don't sit back thinking and don't be ashamed. Let's encourage them as they come. Wherever they are, God bless you. Start coming. Start coming. You come and stand here. He's not the only one. I believe there are still more people outside. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. Quickly, come. Quickly, come. The Lord began to talk to you since from beginning of the service. He doesn't have to do a special one now. Come. You are standing on behalf of your family. You are standing on behalf of your destiny. You can fake it with men, but not with the realm of the spirit. Come, young and old, make your way. Please, if you are coming, hurry up. Encourage them if anybody is coming from your end here. And don't stop them. Don't pinch anybody and stop them back. Let them come. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. I love every one of you who are coming to make a genuine decision for Jesus. Join us, join us. Those coming from outside, if you are still running, just come. It's not too late. Lift your right hand and say after me sincerely. Join them. Lift your right hand. Say after me sincerely. You are talking to the God of heaven now. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I believe in you and I love you with all my heart I'm sorry for the way I've lived my life I declare this night that you are my Lord you are my Savior my life belongs to you I receive eternal life into my spirit from today I move forward ever and backward never keep the hands lifted father this ones have declared unto you sincerely from their heart i agree with them and i decree and declare oh god that you accept this ones turn their lives around in the name of jesus may they begin to experience your grace and your glory by the power of the holy spirit let the lines fall for you in pleasant places and may you have a goodly heritage i bless you i bless you with love for god I bless you with passion for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.